Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value taming, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate it. I run, homie, look what I become. I'm the I'm the one. Okay, we got episode 382. Uh, it's been a wild week. Obviously, a lot of you guys have been seeing the bloodbath comments being made. We'll cover that. We got a lot of crazy things that's going on. We also got a big announcement to be made today about the next live podcast we're doing. The last one we did was Candice uh, with uh, 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 Cuomo. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing another one here as well, announced at the end of the pod today. Uh, suggest if you want to be the first to know, those who want to know it before anybody else, Anybody else, text the word podcast to 310-340-1132. Text the word podcast to 310-340-1132. But we will announce it at the end of the podcast as well. Here we go. A couple things to talk about. Trump says undocumented immigrants are not people. Warns U.S. will see bloodbath if not reelected. We got a bunch of things. Keith Oberman even has some, uh, some hopes of uh, some interesting events happening similar to Lincoln, which we'll get into. England, Barack Obama. President Barack Obama's in England, and Vinny's got some questions there. Biden campaign touts to have $155 million war chest as the largest in history. And uh, we'll give you the comparison to Trump. Swing states blame Biden for inflation, not buying pandemic excuse in 2024. Prices are still going up. Vice President Kamala Harris, check the story out, should step aside for good of the country. Washington Post columnist says, then at the same time, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's family outraged her award given to Musk and Murdoch. Same one. By the way, marriage rates are up. Divorce rates are down. Lily Allen says having children, this is an insider story, totally ruined her career and parents can't have it all. She's got two girls, by the way, and she said this. Can you imagine being a daughter and your mom says, you guys destroyed, totally ruined my career. It's definitely one way of showing love and to your kids. she called them anchors. Yeah, she called them anchors. Sonia Sotomayor should retire now. The Atlantic, what motive did they have? Why do they want her to retire? Is she not left enough for them? What do you see advertising with TikTok on how many minutes a day people spend on TikTok compared to YouTube? And other platforms and, and TikTok's revenue, what it did last year, and then Hertz CEO Stephen Schur resigns after EV push goes bust. Apple fails to dismiss lawsuit claiming air tags are weapon of stalkers. Determination cannot be made at this early stage. That's a Benziga story. Exxon chief goes on the offensive as Wall Street sours on ESG. Toronto chief of police, I believe, and he's got this video we'll show you, says, uh, well, I, I don't even want to tell you what he's saying to you. When he sees it, it's going to make no sense to you on what he's saying, where to leave your car keys. You just got to see this video for yourself. And a man who was binned, who binned $1.5 billion in Bitcoin, drive launches a legal fight to dig dump. Can you imagine losing a billion and a half in Bitcoin, and he's pissed off that other people are trying to find that billion and a half as well. AOC's district neighborhood labeled third world as migrants clog streets and prostitutes overrun every block. Guatemalan illegal immigrant accused of killing veteran cop fired. It's a Daily Mail story. I illegal migrant from uh, Lebanon caught at border admitted his Hezbollah terrorist hoping to make a bomb. That's literally what he said. Headed for New York. Another entrepreneur in America. Google helped boost uh, Obama Clinton presidential run while censoring Republicans. Trump predicts the end of democracy if he loses in 2024. I'll give you a couple stories here with Reddit. Reddit's IPOs is as much as five times oversubscribed. That tells you when there's not a lot of IPOs. Nickelodeon documentary, by the way, that just came out. You said on HBO, right? On oh, Max, yeah. House of Whores inside the abuse allegations aimed at Dan Schneider's, Schneider's kids show. We'll get into that as well. Well, which one should we start off with? Should we just go right into the story with bloodbath? I say let's do bloodbath. Let's go bloodbath. Let's go with the, the the whole story that's going viral with everybody. Trump says undocumented immigrants are not people. Warns U.S. will see bloodbath if not reelected. This is a Hill story. So let's go through see what these guys are talking about. 
<laughs> okay, so the former president comments about migrants accused of crimes um, come as uh, uh, immigration uh, remains a critical issue for 2024. I don't know if you call them people, he said at the al- at rally. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion, but I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says they're a terrible thing to say. The former president's comments about migrants accused of crimes come as immigration remains a pr- crit- critical issue in 2024. I don't know if you call them people, he said at the rally. In some cases, they're not people. Anyways, so this story is going all over the place. And the comments about bloodbath. Rob, do you have the video about bloodbath? If you have the video about bloodbath, let's kind of show this because the media ran with it. Morning Joe ran with it. Joe Scarborough, you cannot make comments like that. Nancy Pelosi ran with it. They're just criticizing them left and right. But this is the context on how the concept of bloodbath was used. Go ahead, Rob. You're not going to be able to sell those guys. If I get elected... Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. OK, you, you didn't play the whole thing, Rob. You're kind of doing what mainstream media is doing. I think <laughs> Rob, 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 is actually Rob, are you a plant? Yeah, Rob what are you is actually doing, doing are you, Do you have a long you, you clip, left Rob, out or the no? entire first part because of what he was saying. Whole, yeah. I, I love Rob. So go ahead, you, Rob. What are you doing right. over there, Rob? Rob has taken over a period of 30 years. 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country, think of it, went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, <laughs> those mm. big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, here we go. now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole... That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Mm. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building there massive factories. Go, Rob. A friend of there mine. You, Rob, I'm, being I'm glad you yeah. played the full clip, Rob. Rob. You were doing so what the Tom, mainstream media th- does. Thoughts oh, on, and, and by the way, do you have, Rob, do you have any other clips on what Pelosi said about it, uh, on what Morning Joe said about it? Maybe if you're I looking s- for it. I sent him the Scarborough, I sent okay. him the, the Scarborough one. Yeah, if, if you got the Scarborough one on how they spun that, because it's important, you know, the the— the game this, is, is a... And this is every... By the this was every single news right. place... Go ahead, Rob. ...was acting like this. He's talking about a bloodbath for America. It's laid out in the terms of it. And these idiots uh, on Twitter, uh, these idiots uh, on, 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 on cable news, these idiots on Sunday shows, going, well, yeah, well, presidents, you know, he was talking only about the auto industry, and this is one more... It's just bullshit. Let me say that Look at 6.15 a.m. It's just bullshit. He knew what he was doing. We're not stupid. Americans aren't stupid. He was talking about... This guy has come and he's Sometimes talking like bath this. Bath he's delusional. By the way, we can pause this. He's actually a pretty smart guy to talk like that. He knows exactly what it's done and what it is. Do you, do you genuinely believe that? Do you believe that he's so I, I, gone no, that no, he's no. like... He knows. He's playing the game because he hates Trump. Yeah. He hates Trump. Go ahead. Is this, is this Pelosi? How long yeah. is this one? Play this clip. 20 seconds. Go ahead. He's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? <sighs> he's going to exact a bloodbath? There's something Wait, wrong. Tom, here. go ahead. No, no, no. If you, you look, this is Trump derangement syndrome at its very peak. Um, have, have, by the way, in terms of Marcus, have we reached peak Trump derangement syndrome? Pretty close. If you have nothing to say, bend the other guy's words. That's what this comes down to. They have no policy. They have nothing they can talk about. Don't you think that, that now that the, the, the primaries are basically settled and we have two uh, presumptive candidates and all we need to do is run to the conventions, don't you think you'd be pushing policies, positive, dream for America, vision? No, you have to bend the other guy's words. Why? Because he's got a head of steam. He's coming up in the polls. You're behind. And you have to go back to the old saw, <clears throat> fear, uncertainty, doubt, and throw it on America. Oh, he's going to exact. What She used a word there. 
What she was saying is, you know, when you the phrase, I'm going to exact vengeance on that. That's what she's doing. And then she's inserting the word bloodbath. So this is a dog whistle to people to claim this is going to be dictatorial. This is going to be horrifying. And all Trump was saying, "G, you're a friend. But if you think you're going to build those cars there. And he said, listen, this is what you want, America. Trump said, that's not the way I deal He's talking about protecting you. He's talking about protecting jobs. That's not the way I deal. Z, you're a friend, but if you think you're going to put the cars there, Benny. just send them over here. And then, I, Forget I'm, it. And I'm so happy that you uh, randomly play Nancy Pelosi. I send Rob a clip. What they're doing right now, what Nancy Pelosi is actively doing, it's called the smear campaign. And if you want to learn the playbook of how to do it, here's an older video of Nancy Pelosi explaining to you guys exactly what she and the mainstream media is doing. Listen from, from her mouth. It's a diversionary tactic. It's a self-fulfilling problem. You demonize, and then you, it, we call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody <laughs> with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, wow. and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. Well, thanks, Nancy. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear. And then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise wow. the press's what? report. That's interesting. So how to. By the way, Nancy Melissa, Pelosi. Uh, a how-to video. Perhaps you're trying to steal your thunder. But listen, guys, I, I, I saw it happening live in real time. And then in my head, I'm just like, okay, because of X. And by the way, it took a while for, for Elon to actually do the fact check, which he did it by himself on, on uh, the NBC one. But my question is, though, Tom, it's. Now that it's been going on for a couple of days now, think about the millions and millions of people that aren't doing the research, that aren't looking at the fact check. The job is done, though, because you know how many people are walking around this week going, did you hear what he said about the, the blood Not the common sense people. Not the common sense But you know people. what, though? Those, the no. non-common sense people are yeah. still voting, uh, too. Uh, no, no, the non-common Any sense people. The polls are showing no, things. The non I think the, the people non know. May I, Tom? Hmm? Can I? I was speaking when you... Go ahead. Finish your thoughts. Go ahead, Tom. No, I was echoing Vinny. Go ahead, say, finish your thoughts. No, no. Go, ahead, go ahead, you were saying something. I want all you to I, finish your thoughts. All I said, I, I trust the people. That's what the polls Yeah. Are. So, no, what I was saying is I don't think the common sense people will do that. I think the common sense people will, uh, will, will see this and actually be more turned off by it. You know, when, when you constantly bitch about, like, for example, I was in a company and they constantly trashed the previous company okay. that they were a part of. And it was another insurance company. You know what eventually happened? Everybody wanted to know what the hell happened with the previous company. So everybody was so curious. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm putting an event together. We have a couple thousand people out of our event. We're small at this time. This is like eight years ago or something like that. And right across the street, there's a similar event going on. Then, you know, this guy who's supposed to speak at our event, they get him to go speak at their event right before. And he's, he's a guy that will take money from anybody. That's why we don't have a relationship. Yeah. So he goes and speaks across the street at the other event. And then at the entire event for four days, guess who they trashed? That guy? No, no, they trashed me. Oh, really? So guess, guess what happened with my phone with DMs? Everybody in that company who has common sense is texting me saying, hey, why do they keep talking about you? And then they came over to us. And then fast forward to that same company that used that model trashing everybody, just lost their biggest guy two months ago, three months ago, just left. 20,000 some reps left, okay? Ew. You know, and, and yeah, all this stuff that's going on that you, you play that game, it doesn't work, right? So when we started the company, I said to myself, so guys, here's one thing we're not going to be doing. We will teach what everybody is doing. And you go make a decision for yourself. That company, it's very hard to build a business. If somebody's built a business that big, it takes a lot of work. Those guys takes a lot of work. Those guys takes a lot of work. You don't tear them down. Now, there are companies that attract people that like to trash other people. That's the Democratic Party today, okay? Yeah. Which is what they're doing, and they're trashing Trump all day long. That works with the people that are going to vote no matter what. Remember what RFK said? What did RFK say? RFK said this is the first time ever where the independent voter is the biggest it's ever been, and it's a bigger vote than the Democrat and the Republican. Yes. You know what the independent voter is saying right now? What are you doing? Do you think I'm dumb? The independent voter who actually has the ability to reason and has logic and common sense watches this and says, 
wow, what a stupid thing to say. Why would you say something like this? Then they fall for the trap. Then the independent voter and goes and watches the whole thing. Then they come back and say, he never said that. Why would you spin that? And then the independent voter sees the Biden administration create an ad about this and spend money behind it. Then they say, now you're dark and manipulative. That's why I'm going to go the other side. And maybe the other side is not going to do something like this. So I don't think this is actually going to work the more things like this they do. Uh, I think the plan of what they want to do is a bigger plan. But I want to go to Adam before I transition to another story. Well, Tom, thanks for letting us speak today. Appreciate you, brother. Um, the, the number one word here that we need to clarify and hone in on is the word literally. So both sides are obsessed with the word literally. So on the right, they say things like you can't take Trump literally. You can't actually take what he's saying literally he's a storyteller he's a marketer he's a showman like he's just an entertainer not everything that he says should you take literally and i understand that on the right now the people on the left they will literally say literally (laughs) you have to take him at his word like if trump says it you have to take him at his word so if you watch anything on the left msnbc cnn anything over there bill maher says this all the time I I take Trump at his word. If he says those words, I believe him, right? When he says the election is stolen or this is the end of democracy or I'm going to be a dictator on day one, I'm going to take him at his word. That is their MO. On the right, they're saying, dude, no, you can't literally take Trump at his word. That's the thing. But here's what I can guarantee on the left. They're going to take every single thing he says that is clippable bloodbath i'm a dictator on day one you know russia you do whatever you want both sides mexicans are rapists and i guarantee you this they're gonna take it they're gonna clip it the pelosi's of the world the biden's of the world they're just gonna take exactly what he says and run with it they feed it to mainstream media it is what it is by the way let's not pretend that trump doesn't also say pretty outlandish things of course he does because okay. he's not afraid to grab the mic though adam you feel me bro like, he'll talk he'll openly talk on the mic when when biden's talking they're like no nope, grab him get him the hell out I, of here i, I want to see what he says go ahead let's, well, let's hear the outlandish I mean, stuff go ahead well like if we're going to use like can we all agree that trump speaks in hyperbole it's going to be the greatest economy ever we're going to win so much he's a showman. Sick- you said it I'm t- yeah, totally. I agree. yeah so like for instance you, you go to the story right here it's on page I don't know. Trump predicts that if he doesn't win, it's going to be the end of democracy. Do you actually think that if he doesn't win, it's going to be the end of democracy? I don't know if you have that story. I mean, uh, okay. You're asking me. So I, I think he's going like this. I, I think just, so. Look, we've dealt with worse in this country before, you know, in 1968 when. Uh, was it 64 MLK elected, uh, uh, assassinated Bobby Kennedy, assassinated civil rights era. We've dealt with worse. We're going to hear the same narrative. This is the most important election of our lifetime. If Trump gets elected, he's a dictator. Trump's going to say if Biden's elected, it's the end of democracy. Here's what I can guarantee. Clip it, run it in 2028. There will be an election in 2028. USA will thrive and survive. There's going to be no civil war. The future looks bright. So everyone that wants to basically say this is the end of democracy or if the other candidate wins, life's over. I don't believe it, but you're entitled to your opinion. Let me ask this question to you sure. there, okay? Because, you know, I'm, I'm fully from the camp of future looks bright, okay? What percentage should we, the voter, the American people, be paranoid about seeing other great societies and other great civilizations and countries that fell, Rome, we can go back and we can look yeah. at a lot of the different case studies that used to be massive and then they fell. How much credibility should we give that there could be a fall in our country? Tom. I think history shows that they all fall. It's just a matter of when, because it's a flawed world, a broken world led by humans that inevitably in hubris and pride and greed make a mistake and go over the waterfall. They've all fallen. You know, all the monarchies of Europe, Rome, all those things you were saying. I think we should study history and we should stand on that that 
that knowledge and say, wait a minute, in my lifetime, I'm going to stop it. In my lifetime, I see something bright. I see a bright future. I see something I want to point to. And in my lifetime, I'm not going to let us go inching closer to the waterfall. I'm going to try to stabilize it, and I'm trying to add something good. That's, that's how I approach life. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it, how many movies have we seen that came true? Think about how many movies we've seen. That at one point you're like, oh, that'll never happen. And now it's going to happen, right? Mean like 1984? <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Like when you're seeing some of these movies, you're like, all of a sudden, you're like, some of these things came true. I think uh, uh, from the standpoint of him saying, you know, this is the end of democracy, if, do you think Trump believes that? Do you think Trump believes that? I think Trump probably believes to his core that something's going on behind closed doors that we're not aware of. Now, is he a better salesman? He is. He's going he's gonna to sell fear and he's going to sell opportunity. And he has to. That's the job of a persuader when you're going through it. But there's also part of it that the level of paranoia with what can happen. Like, you know, this uh, what is it called? The Logan Law, uh, Logan Act. Is it called the Logan Act? Can you pull up the Logan Act? What is the Logan Act? Came out in 1799 is a United States federal law that criminalizes negotiation by unauthorized American citizens with foreign governments having a dispute with the United States. The intent behind the act is to prevent unauthorized no negotiations from undermining the government's position. The act was passed following George Logan's unauthorized negotiation with France in 1798 and was signed into law by President John Adams. January 30th, 1979, the act was amended in 1994, changing the penalty for violation, fined $5,000 to fine under the title. This appears to be only be amended by. So if you, uh, uh, violation of the Logan Act is a felony, okay? And only two people have ever been indicted on charges of violating the act. One is in 1802 and the other is 1852. Neither were convicted. Go to YouTube, go to Twitter right now, Rob, if you don't mind. Go to Twitter and type in... I can't say X, guys, no matter how much I go. So type in Logan, right. go put Logan Act Obama. Okay? Logan Act Obama. And then go down. Go to that. Okay, zoom in a little bit. Obama violating the Logan Act. In plain sight. Click play. What's he doing going there? Vinny shared this video with me. Yeah. What are you here to talk about? Yeah, he's dressed like he's going to a funeral, by the way. And then look, does this photo, watch Obama? This Obama on 10 Downing Street. Look, he waits for the cameras. That's who's in charge, guys. That's who's in charge yeah. of our country, period. So to me, when you ask the question about, uh, uh, you know, it, the democracy is in jeopardy and all this other stuff, I'm, I'm more concerned about from the moment he got elected, what uh, uh, he did, they won one game, back to back to back, then Trump came in, then Biden wins, then this one, if they win, they have full control. And this kind of goes into Supreme Court where now they're asking, you know, if, if, if you want to comment on this Logan well, Act. Well, well, well I, I, I wanted to ask, when, when you say uh, the th Trump's worried about the threat to democracy, yeah. what, uh, did he say end the democracy? What, what does that entail? If that entails, ready for this, the Trump government... Trump predicts the end of democracy if he loses 2024 okay, election. Okay, so ready for this. D does that entail the end of democracy, the government being involved with election interference, what Adam's going to talk about later with Google? Is it the influx of all these illegals for the vote? Is it uh, crime, endless wars? And I mean, if you think about it, he's right. It's not going to happen right then and there. But I mean, they're doing everything to do. And o Obama... Why, why is Obama going to visit with a bunch of heads of state and he's not the president of the United States? It's just showing you uh, Biden's not in charge. Biden can't just jump on a plane, fly to England, go meet with all these people because he was meeting with a, with a couple of them in there. I think Belgium or somebody else, the female was in there. But it's like, what is what is he doing? What, are you making decisions? This is a private meeting. Rob, can you pull up why Obama visited London, visited UK? And yeah, why why did he visit there? That was that was Ten Downing Street, right? Which yeah, is their, which is sort of their White well, House, their Parliament. There, well, there's a there's a there's a the the thing that they're saying is he went there for to talk about something that has nothing to do with this, but the meeting that he was having was was secretive and nobody's going to know what. As he headed inside the Prime Minister's office in London to meet with Sunak, yeah. forty three. Yeah. Sunak's official spokesman told The Guardian that Obama made an information courtesy drop in part of his trip to London where he was visiting for work as part of his Obama foundation. Obama and Sunak were reportedly discussing a wide range of topics, including AI. Yeah. Pretty out I think President Obama's team made contact, and obviously the prime minister was very happy. Why would they? Yeah, so, so this is the kind of stuff that's a little bit... Uh, 
Suspicious. Suspicious on, on what's not. Listen, has this happened before? I'm sure uh, uh, Obama's, I'm sure Clinton's done this God knows how many gazillion times where they met with different people. But, uh, yeah, I'm concerned on if, if this election is going to be a fair election and Trump wins or loses, if it's a fair election, Trump's winning this election. But when you look at yesterday, this whole thing they're doing with him trying to pull up cash, Wall Street Journal uh, did a story on the fact that he's got around $400 million of cash sitting there, is what he, what he has right now. Net worth is around $3 billion, right? Mm-hmm. $400 million of cash, three hundred fifty five. They're so close to wanting to deplete him. And this Letitia James person, you know what she wants to do? The bond, the bond yeah, situation? Do, but do you know what she wants? She wants to seize his assets. She wants to seize his assets. Yeah. She wants to yellow tape, red tape around the buildings and saying, hey, these assets have been seized by the... They want to seize... They want that visual mm-hmm. because he can't post bond for 464 right now in a New York civil case. And they're speculating that Trump's going around asking for money from different people. They're saying the meeting with Musk was about that. And there's a lot of Republicans that are saying, why don't some of these billionaire Republicans come out and give the money? But the reality of it is, of it is the, 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 the dark strategy of cornering him with things like this, with the specific amount of money to hurt him so they can seize his assets to embarrass him. <clears throat> Guys, it's going to be so nasty the next six months. Uh-huh. It's going to be so nasty the next six, seven, eight months on what they're going to do. But all of this stuff comes together. They fear this guy being in the White House. I don't know why. They fear oh, this guy being in the White House. Th- there's no doubt. You know, like, you know when, I'm, <clears throat> when I give sort of the devil's advocate thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so completely disenfranchised with the Democratic Party as it stands. You know, I'm registered independent. I've never voted for Trump. But... There's a lot of people like me that are like, yeah, I'm not a fan of Trump's bluster and his rhetoric, but I just can't get condone what the Democratic Party stands for at this point. But there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of I, I actually empathize with a lot of the people on the right that understand that there, there is some sort of whether you want to call it a witch hunt, whether you want to call it election interference. You know, this guy was a half a billion dollars. Right. And Letitia James, who campaigned on the fact that she wants yeah, to Trump. prosecute yeah. Trump, she's out there basically saying that she's going to try to seize his assets. So this 464, if you just want to go down the rabbit hole of Trump's money, FTM, follow the money. Trump's worth what? Give or take about $3 billion. Is that fair? Is that a fair number? Of that, there's According about, to Wall Street Journal. Yeah. So. Well, that's a fair, that's a credible source. Well, what I'm, yeah, exactly. That. I agree yeah. with you. So at, of that, he has about. They said about a half a billion dollars of cash, give or take four to five hundred million of cash. Fair number. So what they're basically saying is he owes three fifty five from the um, fraudulent asset inflation valuation uh, case that there's a hundred million dollars of interest that he owes on top of that. Plus, you have the E. Jean Carroll that was like, what, $92 million? So the guy owes a half a billion dollars. So what are his options? Because, by the way, the interest is gaining $100,000 a day. Is that insane? So how's he going to pay it? So number one, uh, I think a judge rejected the $100 million bond. So how's he going to pay this off? Because is he going to deplete all his cash and pay it off? You're not going to do that. Are you going to borrow against your assets? He has $2.5 billion worth of real estate assets to borrow against? What do you get an LOC, a line of credit against that? What are you going to start borrowing money from big time friends? Maybe that's why he's meeting with Elon or he's going to have to do a fire sale of his real estate. Either way, if you just look at it unbiased, they are coming after Trump and they want him so, to so, pay so a guess lot what, of freaking money. The end of democracy. No, no, you're seeing it. Live. Look exactly what they're doing right now. What democracy from cheating in the elections to taking out an opponent to ruining the country. I mean, what do you mean the end? It's hap- It's ending in front of your face. If they and the people are cool with this, like, well, what are we even talking about? What are we even talking about? Look, so, you know, you can arm yourself and you can. You, oh, I am. You and I. Yeah. Two yeah, A. Two A brother. Mm-hmm. Um, you can arm yourself and you can protect your home or you can rob a convenience store. You can use a gun in both ways. One is very illegal, one is wrong, and the other is exercising your right under the Constitution to protect your family. This is judicial activism that they're attempting to use the letter of the law to rob a convenience store. They're, they're basically using laws to basically commit crime in broad daylight. When, when you deny bail to someone, 
You deny bail because you think they're a flight risk. For instance, mm-hmm. you have somebody in Miami is arrested because they were caught with 100 pounds of cocaine, like last year around Christmas. The guy's on the boat. Why did they deny bail? Because they thought they were going to get their buddies to fly him to Colombia and escape, and escape justice. Trump is not a flight risk. He actually wants to stay here and be president. I think, let me, let me check. Nope, nope, he's pretty clear yep. about that. Mm-hmm. He's not going anywhere. So, and he's posted a bond. So he, is, he has had $100 million to post sort of bail on this. The other thing is these, these things get suspended under appeal. Here's what happens. They say, hey, look, if you lose the appeal, you are going to have to pay interest on your judgment. Do you understand that, Vinny? Yes. You and your attorney say yes. Yep. Okay, well, then we're going to suspend the payment while we go to appeal because that's part of, here's a phrase, due process. So what I worry about is not the threat to democracy. I worry about the threat to due process. And what you, when you read about weaponizing the judicial system, to me, that is not a an inflammatory phrase. That is an appropriate description of what they're trying to do. They're using the judicial system to rob the convenience store. And I, that's what is appalling to me here. He's posted the bond. Let's go to appeal and let's see if this goes. And you know what scares him about appeal? What scares him about appeal is November 5th. The election's over. He's elected. They're worried about everything gets wiped off at that point. But that's the opportunity to correct the judicial activism. This is this is what is horrifying to me is that he's got the bond and under appeal. These things get suspended. and He's not a flight risk. So they're using all the things that they would use against a drug lord against him where they're weaponizing the justice system in plain daylight. Tom, stay. Let's stay on that topic. Let's stay on that topic. So why, what are reasons why democracies fail? Well, there's there's the crumbling. Rome crumbled when they failed to honor and respect the Roman people and yep. stopped serving the people, and the Caesars became corrupt, and the whole thing fell. And, and that's really, if you look, I just summarized the fall of the Roman mm-hmm, Empire. Mm-hmm. They failed to serve the country and its people, became corrupt unto themselves, and ultimately they killed one of each other, Caesar, Julius Caesar. <laughs> they even got together, we're all corrupt and you're the most corrupt. Ugh, there, here you go, guy. And they killed one of their own. And ultimately the whole thing fell because the people didn't have confidence in government. Even the guys that led didn't have confidence. And guess what? Foreign enemies came in and, and filled that up. And that was it. You read So this, this is on the History Channel. I remember doing this. We, we didn't mm-hmm. talk about it uh, one podcast. Invasion by, by uh, barbarian tribes, economic troubles, and over-reliance on, on slave labor. The rise of Eastern Empire, uh, over-expansion and military overspending. I don't even... Sounds, sounds familiar. Government corruption and political instability. Wrong. Weird. Sounds like us. The rival of the Huns and the migration of barbarian tribes. Weird. That's so weird. Um, what's the other one? Christianity and, and the loss of traditional values, weakening of the Roman legions. A lot of that sounds like what's happening here yeah. right now. Is that crazy? Those are the one, those are the eight reasons that Rome fell, and six out of eight of those are happening right now in the United States. Yeah, and, there, and we talked about the bases that we have all over the world. How many eight hundred bases, and we're it's trying crazy. to basically, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not in the isolationist camp, and I'm certainly not in the interventionist camp, and getting involved in every single foreign war out there. There needs to be a balance out there. Dave Smith and Candace Owens had a great conversation about stop trying to turn the American empire into an actual worldwide empire and just focus on it being an actual republic this is what happened to rome they tried to expand they tried to intervene in every single war and if you try to win every single war you can't win the war at home and basically you crumble within then you get into the um lack of confidence that a lot of people think that the elections are stolen everything like that whether that's true or not they believe it so there's a lot of people what's the stat out there that's basically um 50 of people Americans can't tell the difference between facts and opinions, okay? Nearly half of respondents, 56%, sorry, 46%, struggle to differentiate between facts and opinions. People don't know what the hell's going on here at this point. <laughs> so at this point, you know, it's, you know, the, the information age is officially over, meaning that we have information at our fingertips, whether you call it Google, whether you call it AI, whatever it is, we are now officially in the, end, in the era of confirmation and validation. What the hell is true? What the hell is not true? So that's a, a major problem in our democracy at this point is facts and, and opinions uh, differentiate. Tom, go ahead. Well, and, and you look at France, you know, 
the, the French Revolution. The monarchy, you know, treated the people like crap, and it ultimately led to a strong leader in Napoleon rising out of that. Um, you go from the storming of the, I, and help me out on history, you go from the storming of the Bastille to the rise of Napoleon and, and basically the execution <laughs> of the king because the king was treating the people like crap, ignoring things. And so a great country and a great you know, societies fail usually when the government turns its back on the people and becomes corrupt. You could probably put that as the headline, Pat, and that and all the things about Rome. And then barbarians come in. Your army becomes weak. Your vision is how gone. much corruption do we have with our government? Oh, right my now? God. It's a how member. It's, yeah. a, it's the least trusted in the history you know, of America. Rob, I just I just saw this earlier. I want to send this to you. So historically, who's always been talked about at the lowest a uh, uh, presidential approval rating of all time. Historically, Trump you always ever? no. You no. You'll, you'll hear about uh, Jimmy uh, Carter. Like Jimmy Carter's right? number one Biden. Jimmy, the, guy, so the guy before Lincoln wasn't so good. So check this out, Rob. Uh, I'm going to send it to your Mac if you can if you can see this one. So numbers come out, and apparently Biden is furious behind closed doors. <laughs> is, is there that story about being upset with the fact that people are? Not supporting, he's losing his cool. Do you have that story, Robbie? Oh, there it is. Behind the yeah. scenes, Biden has grown angry and anxious about re-election effort. Okay. So uh, President Biden's frustration with his re-election uh, prospects is evident as he reacts with declining poll numbers in the battleground uh, states like Michigan and Georgia. Feeling he is not. And by the way, this is an NBC News. This is not Fox News. I'm reading to you. Oh. This is NBC News. Feeling he's not receiving enough credit for his actions and even should and shouting and swearing in a meeting over the issue. Despite stating starting to his general election campaign, Biden faces challenges with a low approval rating compared to past presidents who lost re-election. Rob, can you pull up that one thing I just sent you? I don't know if you have it, if it's come to you yet or not. Uh, so he's struggling to convey his achievements effectively, grappling with in internal conflicts over campaign strategies. And his natural retail pol uh, pol uh, politician instincts, Biden's team remains confident but acknowledges the need for better communication. Look at this here. Wow. Approval rating, February of fourth year. Okay. February of fourth year. Okay. He's the worst out of everybody. Okay. <laughs> I'm shocked. And Trump was the highest. Yep. 48%. But, you know, uh, uh, go ahead, Tom. It's what made Bush vulnerable. It's the economy, stupid. Yeah. Remember? So, so look at him. Him and Bush were the lowest. Carter was 43 and Trump's at 48, um, meaning uh, uh, maybe it was an approval rating that he didn't get reelected. Yeah. Maybe there was other I'm, things going on, like Twitter files. And yeah, I'm shocked that Biden is just finding this out. I mean, it's been it's been a two year decline I mean, when, I, he, when he was elected. He was at 50 something percent. He campaigned on bridging the gap, bring us all together. Now this guy's secretly trying to build a wall. I, I'm, I'm not su surprised by this 38 percent. We're going to have to fact check that 48% on Trump. That's the highest well, we, number I've ever seen for him, by the way. We had an so insider that told us about the meeting, Adam. There was an insider at the White House, and he read this. He said, America's leadership has got the lowest approval rating of all time. And Biden pounded his fist and said, damn it, we have to do something about this guy. And he said, excuse me, sir, it's you. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, had no idea what meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile, to be fair, he has the most money ever. Mm -hmm. So meanwhile, when you look at this, he's got $155 million war chest as the largest in history, okay, largest in history. When you look at the dollar amount, uh, 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 page five, 155, 155 yeah. million dollars is what he's got. Uh, political apparatus boasted uh, after about fortifying a 155 million dollar war chest, which is du uh, dubbed the highest total of any Democratic candidate in history at this point in a presidential cycle. The mountain of cash was topped off by a $53 million haul in, uh, during February, blowing past the $42 million it raked in a month prior, according to the campaign. These figures refer to the totals from Biden-Harris Biden campaign, the Democratic National Committee, and its joint fundraising committee. They marked the fourth consecutive month of fundraising growth. We're proud of the record-breaking fundraising machine we built that is going towards uh, reaching the voters about the stakes of the election Julie Chavez Rodriguez, Biden Harris 2024 campaign. So, Tom, that kind of money, how much how much does does that kind of money actually matter at this time? Right now, um, to the American voters that are being polled, uh, it doesn't appear to matter at all. And I love her quote. We're reaching the voters about the stakes of the election. 
they're not going to talk about the policy. They're going to say, what's at stake if the other guy? So they're already telling you, get ready for a summer of demonization and everything we've just seen. So this much money right now doesn't really matter. Except to remember, there's campaign money. And then there's committee money, and then there's PAC money. There's three stacks. So the campaign's done a very good job and has raised a lot of money on a historical basis. But it's the PACs that are in there and what uh, that are ultimately uh, carry the day for election because of the, the John Roberts decision. Now all that corporate money will come in when everything is clear. So right now, this is historically significant, but this is nothing compared to the $7 billion that's going to be spent on this election. And a lot of that's the seven dark- billion. Oh, yeah. If, if Rob could pull up. Damn. Did you say $7 billion? Uh, with a B. Rob, could you pull up what was spent on Zelensky's 2020 gonna be election? When, if Zelensky How much sees this, 2020 be presidential election total spending? Oh, no. Zelensky's going to come to Congress and be like, wait, that's my money. What yeah, there it give? is. And by the way, take out the primaries. Just look at the regular election. And I believe it's $7 billion. Wow. Rob, if you scroll down or some sort of charts, I believe it was $7 billion on the presidential wow. election after the primaries. Look at the double and spike. Congressional spending presidential. Yeah, you're right. It's a five and a half billion there. So it's going to be seven billion this time around. Correct. Okay. So, so th- this is important to the campaign, but the packs and the dark money is the power. Tom, that number doubled. Every year was going down less and less for presidential from 28, 2008. And then all of a sudden Biden 2020 spiked because obviously so so we had to kill the red we had to kill the orange man. It, it, oh my gosh, I mean, you look at, and by the way, th- there's something going on. I want to read this time because I want to see where you were going to go with this. Sonia Sotomayor should retire now. The Atlantic, okay? Sonia Sotomayor should retire now. Page 10. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Let's go through here. Here we go. Sonia Sotomayor should retire now. The Atlantic. Uh, uh, Sotomayor's retirement is crucial for Democrats to secure a liberal seat on the Supreme Court. In 2006, Justin Scalia, failure to retire, led to Republican control of the seat, highlighting the importance of timing. With Sotomayor turning 70 soon, her retirement now would allow President Biden to nominate a young liberal successor, ensuring a slam dunk confirmation. Failure to retire risks a conservative majority to turn into a 7-2, mm. imperiling liberal causes like abortion rights, Democratic hesitance to push towards Sotomayor retirement. Uh, 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 reflects broader issues and the party's approach to diversity and representation. While representing it, representation is vital, it shouldn't prioritize individual officials over policy outcomes. Learning from past mistakes, Democrats should prioritize defending liberal seats on the court, even if it means urging retirement for justices like Sotomayor to avoid repeating history. Tom. So here's what happened here. Do you remember four months ago where I predicted, I said, listen, this Colorado decision that was going to the Supreme Court is already 5-4. It's done. And when it's going to go to the court, it's going to be 5-4. And if Roberts goes, it's going to be 6-3. But I pointed out, but I think it's 7-2 because I think Sonia Sotomayor is going to side with them because of voting rights. Mm -hmm. Remember I said that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a liberal but she's not liberal enough and she's not manipulative em- enough. And the the liberals that are screeching from the media think that the Supreme Court is just another wing of Congress. All you do is lobby them and you get them to do what you want. Uh, we just need to tell the Supreme Court to do this. That's because they want to put a judge in place, influence the judge and get judicial activism. Well, some of these justices are not for sale. And so Sotomayor is bearing brunt of people saying, oh, why didn't you push harder in Colorado? Why didn't you be a dissenting? Why were you there with Roberts in the middle? It's because she read the law and she didn't want states, not that she didn't want, but our constitution said states do state things, federal does federal things. And they came after her. And so they want to they want to they want her. Probably she's only 70. Good grief. Al Michaels is in his 80s, still successfully broadcasting <laughs> football with a lot of energy. And now they want her. Oh, because they want a activist liberal judge that they can control who will discard the Constitution on certain things and be an activist just like they have their other judges. But let's look at Sonia Sotomayor. Her dad died when she was nine. Her grandmother and her mom raised her. She was valedictorian of a public school, got into Princeton, did well, got into Yale, editor of the Law Review, and she became uh, a, um, uh, a prosecutor, prosecuted, helped business owners that were fighting against uh, fake garments and things in New York City, helped the owner of Fendi, who was losing his shirt because they were making fake Fendi stuff, a capitalist, build a fashion brand. She helped him 
clean that, clean that up. But she was very liberal on a lot of other things like taxation and stuff that I disagree with her views. But then you know what she did? Hmm. Here's three decisions most people don't know about. And this is why the core liberals, this is why the Bernie Sanders and the Elizabeth Warren wing and the AOC wing actually don't like her behind the scenes. 1995, Dow Jones versus Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. The Wall Street Journal said that they should be able to, to publish the Vincent Foster suicide letter so America could see it and inspect it. The Clinton Justice Department said, no, 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 and tried to injunct the Wall Street Journal. Do you know what the Superior Court judge's name was mm. that said freedom of speech mm. should rule and that Wall Street Journal should publish it? Tell us. Sonia Sotomayor. There you go. 1995, baseball strike is going on. A young girl that grew up in the Bronx and went to Princeton and Yale, puts down the decision that broke the baseball strike. She sided slightly with the players that said that the owners refusing to negotiate the new collector bargaining agreement, refusing to come to the table, was bad faith, and they had a monopoly. I don't completely agree with the decision, but it broke the strike, and she said in her decision, I may not know everything about your business, but I grew up in the South Bronx, and I love baseball, and both of you are in bad faith, and something needs to Good move. for you. That's what she did. Then, in 2004, Maurice Claret attempted to the break— The running back? Yep, attempted to break, attempted to break the NFL by saying, hey— the, by the way, the NCAA had longstanding rules. The NFL said that they didn't want to take players until they were three years out of high school. A longstanding rule. Claret sued the NFL, said that it was bad faith, preventing him from earning a living. She sided with the NFL that said, no, that business has rules. You're not old enough to play in their business, and you can't break their business just because you've dropped out of um, college because you got thrown out of Ohio State, and, and you want to do this. She but she has been Let me a, ask this a question, moderating Let force, me ask this and they hate her for it. I got you. So that was a very good uh, breakdown of her resume and what she's done. Pretty impressive. But the question is this, Tom. Is there something going on deeper that we're not paying attention to with this? Let me give you my idea on, on how I size up the opponent to see what they're thinking about and what their thoughts are. Okay, what is the biggest challenge Democrats are having right now? What is their biggest challenge they have for 2024? Who, uh, who is, their candidate? Uh, aside, <laughs> well, he's definitely one, but guess what? You let's say he's the guy that's going to be going, and you know, 80 90 percent chance he's the one that's going to be going. W what is what's getting in the way for them? It's one person, Elon Musk, Kamala Harris. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me ask you this what, what did Kamala Harris do before she became president? What did she do in California? She, she was, was a, a senator, and then she was horrible. The, uh, she was the worst attorney, statistically speaking, yeah. she was the worst attorney general on record. She got terrible ratings. Yeah. How, how, and then she became senator. What would it mean to her to be a Supreme Court justice? What would it mean to her to uh, be possibly on that short list of being nominated for a job like that? It completes her career and she becomes their tool forever. OK, so let me ask this. What if what are the chances of a conversation having taken place to say, look, come on, here's what we want you to do. We want you to take a to step down, have somebody else come be the VP. OK. And in return, uh, Sotomayor, in the next four years, we're going to nominate you and we're going to give that job to you. What do you think percentage-wise, 0 to 100, that that conversation or thought or the strategy has been had? 200%. Oh, you, you really are that high? But because I don't think the Atlantic writes this article unless somebody is scared that they have yeah. to do it now, that they can't do it after I, November. I fully agree, by the way. And so what is the that that they have to do? Sotomayor. Yeah. How about you retire? You're going to make millions of dollars speaking. We'll make sure of it. Our friends will pay you to speak. We've seen that, Pat, right? You're going to get a book deal. You're going to get this. You're going to get Ask millions. And all the, Don't yeah. worry about it. We'll take care of you. You step down. That creates a vacancy. They could immediately, they could immediately get Kamala to step into that position. Yeah. So, so let's stay on this, Tom. So let's stay on this. I'm with you. 200%. Yeah. I, because I, I thought that's where you were going to go with it. You go, you went through a different angle, but let me go to a different angle as well. Okay. Let's look at a different angle. So the other way I read this from the Atlantic is, so one way is Kamala's the problem. Let's replace her. Here's the other angle. The other angle I see Atlantic writing this is they're worried Trump's going to win. Exactly. So, so to me, I don't think it's just the Kamala Harris argument. I think one angle is the Kamala argument. The other angle is Trump's going to win, 
and he's going to put another person on the right, like a Trey Gowdy or whatever. Like he's going to put somebody from the right, that strong personality, Jim, I don't know, pick a person that's going to be a, that strong type of personality to put in there. Now 7-2 and they're young. How long is that going to last? Do you know Democrats are going to, this means Democrats are going to lose their mind for 25 years? What are you talking about? Forget about the president. Forget about senators. Forget about Congress. Supreme Court is the most powerful. If you control Supreme Court, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. So you can try to do. By the way, if this was right now, seven two the other way around, imagine a couple of them agree on Colorado and all this other stuff. So oh, God. to me, Tom, I read this and I put Kamala at a twenty percent chance that they're fearing what could happen Kamala. That's one of the uh, reasoning behind the story that being talked about in the behind closed doors. But the other one is also they fear that Trump's probably going to end up winning. What, what's the percentage you think of Kamala? Because, I mean, dude, she seems like she has an attitude from all the staff and everybody when they approach her like that to step down and not. What do you think her attitude is towards, okay, I'll take one for the team? I, 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 seem like, I think she's the type of person to be like, I'm not going anywhere. I think I, I don't know what her aspirations are. Like, for example, you say that to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> You, go call your life insurance agent. <laughs> you know, like, it's a, I mean, yeah. allegedly. Have somebody else yeah. put on your car. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that's called humor, folks. So yeah, it's, it, it's comedy. Yeah, it's but, comedy. But uh, so so if you, if you, because Hillary only wanted one spot. Of course. Which of is president, president, right? I don't know if Kamala, you know, views uh, her ambitions are to be a president. Being on the Supreme Court, brother, that is a heavy, heavy duty job. It's a very powerful job, and she's young, you know. So, so the pitch behind closed doors to present that. How old is Kamala Harris, Rob? Can you pull up her age? Is she Can in we her fifties? Guess? We guess. I was gonna say fifty-two, fifty-three. No, no, she's older than that, dude. Fifty-nine. Good for her, yeah, by the way. She's almost sixty. Listen, I. But black don't crack, so she looks better, you know. But, 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 but the point is, she, good, she's, she actually, I would have never guessed she's fifty-nine years yeah. old. Good for her. She used to look suit. hot with Montel Williams on the red carpet with the other girl. She used be to be 60. banging. Yeah. By the way, PBD, look at that birthday. October 20th. The day the insurance company became official. Yeah. But she doesn't have the special day of October 18th. That's what I was going to say. Kept for the two days late. Adam, you weren't here. Adam, late. Adam wasn't, wasn't here for the conversation. <sighs> you know, I love about what Pat does. It's up. You know this. Pat will be in an interview and Pat will be like this. So when's your birthday? And the person goes like, October 8th. Pat goes. Interesting. And then changing the conversation, like, what the hell happened? We're Am I going to kill some guy? <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to talk to that guy. I just have a quick question on uh, the... Uh, so I fully believe that Kamala Harris is that delusional that she actually thinks she could be the president one day. I actually believe that Joe Biden is that delusional that he's shocked to find out that he has low approval ratings. I actually believe they are this delusional that they are running two of the worst candidates for president and vice uh, president... To be the nominees, I actually believing at face value, real politic, like face with the reality of what's in front of you, of what's happening. I don't understand the, I get the, you know, the facade of, well, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going to move Kamala around. We're going to move around. We're going to have this conversation. We're going to move here. I just don't see it happening. I actually think that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, are going to be the weak, limping candidates running into the election. Luckily, they're running against someone that doesn't exactly have great approval ratings. Donald Trump will see who his vice president candidate could be because I think that could be a difference maker juxtaposing, you know, a uh, strong female candidate or even a Vivek against a Kamala. I think they'll run circles around her. But I don't understand the, the moving of, of Sotomayor. She's only 69 years old. The average age of most Supreme Courts are in their 70s. Justice Roberts is in his Mid to late seventies. Uh, Actually, Clarence Thomas is in his, I think, well, seventy five. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm going to interrupt you and correct you. Uh, Clarence Thomas is in mid seventies. Alito is in his mid seventies, yeah, and Sotomayor is almost seventy. Everybody else is very young. No, I get that. Amy Comey Barrett was born in seventy two, and Brown Jackson was born in seventy. Yeah, she's fifty three. Gorsuch is fifty six. He's fifty eight. I get it. I'm we just saying a, there's... we have the youngest court we've had in two decades. I'm not disagreeing with you, Tom. Thank you for taking over the podcast today. I'm just saying there's several people. Easy does it, Prince. Who are who are way older, old man? Like they're your age. <laughs> they're half the Supreme Court is younger than Tom. That's how you know they're pretty young out there. But the point is this: she's the first Latina female ever nominated to the Supreme Court by. Uh, Obama in 2009. She's the third female ever. This would sort of go against the entire Democratic narrative of a Latina female woman of color being on the court. 
I get the Kamala fascination, and maybe that happens. I don't understand why they would want her to step down. I, I don't see it. She's 69. She's, young. She's yeah. 69, exactly. You know, so there's, yes, I get there's people younger than her. I just, I, I don't kudos understand her, why they the would way. want her to step kudos, down. Kudos to her for, you know, uh, sticking to her guns and, you know, doing more focused on what America was founded on instead of a... Uh, you know, falling for the political trap. That's I agree. And, fall I, and, for. And, and kudos to the Supreme Court for actually upholding the yeah. fact that Biden should, I'm sorry, that Trump should be on the ballot, especially what's going on in Colorado. Just a little FYI, you know who her like mentor was? Take a guess. Who? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. RG, yeah. Okay. They served on the court together. Yeah. How old was Ruth Bader Ginsburg when she retired? 87 years old. Yeah. So she's got another she 15, like, 17 she years was yeah. before old. she even considers it. Yeah. She so, you know, I'm trying to live in reality. So, so, by the way, yes. the more you take that angle, the more I lean on the argument being for recruiting Kamala, the more you take that angle. Because if, it's, if she was 77, you would worry that in the next four years she's going to be stepping down, so the chances would be higher. If she's 69 going 10 years, what are you worried about? She's still going to be there for you, 69. She looks pretty healthy yeah. for 69. She's probably going to go into her 80s. So it makes me think it is more of a negotiation tactic to give that job to somebody. And they feel right now if they want to do Roe v. Wade, they don't think she's going to overrule it, and it's going to stay. Mm -hmm. They're just not going to have that power. Who knows? I don't know. And you remember in the, in the uh, State of the Union address, Biden lectured the Supreme yes, Court justices. He, he sat, he sat yeah, them there like like a teenager who right. they caught sneaking out it in the middle of the night. He's not and they sat there just stone faced. Yeah. And we also, it also shows you that on the liberal side, if you're not with them, you're against them, and they will turn on you. And look what they do to their own. Yep. Yeah. They do yeah. their own. It, well, again, uh, <laughs> I'm so interested on the strategy side. I'm, I'm more coming from the strategy side than I'm coming from uh, the, uh, uh, you know, What's really going on? I'm Here's with you on the strategy. And closers. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the next story here. TikTok. Tom, I'm going to go to TikTok. I'm coming to you here with the TikTok story. Rob, if you want to pull up that chart as well on the amount of time we consume on which social. I'm going to read both these stories together, guys. TikTok's U.S. revenue hit $16 billion at Washington threatens ban. That's Financial Times. TikTok's business in charts, according to Wall Street Journal, boasts over 90 minutes of daily average uh, user engagement, surpassing major competitors like YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, according to uh, Aptopia, Aptopia, this consistent engagement underscores its significant impact on users' daily routines and entertainment preferences. Despite its relatively short existence, TikTok has made significant strides in the advertising space, recording a staggering $6.6 billion in U.S. digital ad last, uh, last year. Figures estimate that by eMarketer, look at that, as a formidable player, and by the way, meanwhile, their revenue soared to, uh, to $16 billion in 2023, marking record-breaking sales for viral video apps. This is all happening. So uh, despite TikTok's profitability challenge due to exist, uh, extensive global expansion efforts, ByteDance reported $28 billion in net profits in 2023 with the majority of its business originating from China. So check this out. Go, go, stay on that chart, Rob. Yeah. Look at that. 97 minutes. TikTok's first place, YouTube second, let's say 75, 80 minutes. Facebook is ahead of Instagram. Would you have ever thought Facebook would be ahead of Instagram? What do people do on Facebook that they're not doing on Instagram? It's weird. It's but like okay. families and older sharing people. family photos. Look, at, look what people. TikTok did to Snapchat. Because Snap would have been there mm -hmm. if TikTok wasn't around. And Pinterest is pretty much gone. And Rob, do you have the other chart from the same article showing... What percentage of ads are up or down? Because there's another one that shows, oh. Yeah, if I you just sent you a bunch of the charts if, on Slack if you want to check that out, Rob. If you have Brandon, Brandon can, can uh, 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 I have it, but. you know which one I'm talking about? Oh, uh, not that one. Go to the right. That one right there. Yeah. That one right there. Nice. Uh, zoom in a little bit to see. So that's what, quarterly U.S. downloads, TikTok number one, YouTube number two, Instagram 2024, TikTok, Snapchat. Interesting. So YouTube has gone fallen down, I think, to the fifth spot. Go lower, Rob. 21, they were number ads. two. Go on the ads. I want to see the ad revenue because ad revenue showed which one was up and which one was That was down. the next chart, that one right there. No, that's the age. Go back one, Rob. Is that it? That one. Um, Monthly active users. No, sorry. not that one because X is doing fine. Anyways, there was one that showed the ad. Oh, go back. Oh, it's on the bottom. Go forward, Rob. Go forward. You were just on it like a yeah. second ago. 
No, go back. Uh, right, it's that go one to the, the bottom. bottom. That's on, that all the way yeah. to the bottom. TikTok up 32%. That's yeah, the one right there? TikTok is up. Yeah, there 30, you go. But look at this. Go a little. Okay. Instagram's up. Facebook's up. YouTube's up. Snapchat, look, look at X. X at the bottom. That's where I was going. Yeah. Minus 55% year over year advertising. And this is something that Don Lemon brought up in the interview with Elon mm -hmm. for an hour. But Tom, you look at TikTok's number, okay? In, in, in what they're doing. This is the question that I have in regards to TikTok. And I want to ask you guys here, okay? I was on uh, uh, CNBC the other day with Brian, uh, um, very nice guy, really enjoyed being on it. What's his last name, Brian? I want to give him me? credit. No, no, that's no, not, not kill me. No, it was a different Brian. If you go on Twitter and- uh, Brian uh, Sullivan, I believe. Is that who it, it is? It could have been, could have been. Really enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, we talked Sullivan. about TikTok. This guy? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so He's a stud. And he asked me questions about TikTok and- Here's, here's what we talked about. I said, so, you know, the whole concern is, well, you know, what about the ban and what about the bill? What's wrong with this? Americans are not happy. Everybody wants TikTok to be gone, et cetera, et cetera. I, then I posed this question, Tom, what happens? Because most people don't realize how big bike then, how many users TikTok has. You know how many users TikTok has? In U.S., it's 150 to 170. Yeah. Do you know how many users TikTok has worldwide? 2.1 to 2.4 billion users okay wow. and the name tiktok is a different name in china okay it's the same app but a different app in china but they use the same technology apparently okay so tom what if bike dance all of a sudden said the following we're not selling then u.s says we're forcing you to sell you better sell bike then says no we're not selling well then guess what we're banning you if they ban, and what if TikTok bite then says, go ahead, we don't care, ban us. What happens if that happens? Because TikTok doesn't seem like they're playing ball with these guys. Meaning bite then's not playing, bite then's sitting there saying, dude, we're not going to play ball with you. They've changed their board to make them happy. They've added people. You were talking about this yesterday, that they've brought certain people in to make the market happy, that they have better people on their board. But what if all of a sudden bite then says, you know what, forget it. Go ahead and cancel it, politicians. Go ahead and cancel it. Go ahead. Turn it off. Because Trump did this with Huawei when at one point just eight years ago, people were using Huawei phones in the U.S. And Huawei was a $100 billion company overnight. There was no more Huawei. What are the chances that Biden says, screw you, U.S., we're not going to sell in the U.S., do whatever you want to do? Well, there's going to be an economic fallout. The first economic fallout is within social media. Let's look at three layers. The first thing, the av advertisers go nuts because the advertising revenue is causing people to sell products. Whether it's blue jeans, Pepsi, or whatever it is, advertisers see that, and it's harder and harder to get. Um, it's harder and harder to manage. We know this. We have a lot of our uh, clients. People are coming to the vault uh, later this year. They're looking for places to advertise. So the advertisers are going to freak out because the reason all that advertising dollars is on uh, TikTok is to get in front of the coveted 18 to 24 and 18 to 30 year old audience. So now I can't advertise to those people to sell my stuff. So that's a problem. Number one. Number two. Two, Facebook and Snapchat. Snapchat has been just languishing. And it's like, what are they going to become? Are they going to pop back up? Does America's youth turn back to Snapchat for things? Or do they turn to Facebook? So Facebook and Snapchat will try to jump into the void. The advertisers will be upset. But that is nothing compared to the outcry that will come from the 16 to 24 year old uh, Americans that are completely flipping out. If you take a look at what you're already seeing in these demonstrations, you would have um, strong response to our government as if we took away, you know, you take away a baby's toy. What does it do? It screams and cries, Pat, they will freak out. The users will absolutely freak out. And the ones that are not voting, the, the 18 to 24s that don't vote, don't really pay attention to government will suddenly be, oh, hang on a second. I got a text. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, it's Z. We have closer to 100 million viewers and your back door is unlocked and your neighbor's dog pooped on your lawn again. Well, that's very nice of him. G sent me a text to let me know they're close to 100. But th that's what I think will happen, Pat. You're going to have a the user base. Rob, can you pull up the article I just biggest. sent you? Tom, that joke would be like top 50. You can do better than that because <laughs> I, you crushed it on the Candace and, uh, oh, and murder. The, that was number one oh, all time. Still, people are still talking no, about that it. One, that one, actually, I got calls from Netflix saying, does Tom want to do a special? It was a special. Yeah, we, five we were having a conversation. Five-minute special. Rob, can you pull up this mm -hmm. thing I just sent you? This is what I'm interested in, Tom, and I want to get a real 
sincere answer from you, no jokes. I want a real answer. So 16 billion is the revenue, right? Of the 16 billion TikTok, do you know what percentage of ByteDance revenue is TikTok? ByteDance revenue is 120 billion. Go lower. Wow. Go lower, Rob. So ByteDance revenue right there, if you look at a second paragraph, 120 billion, which is up 40% from a year earlier, but out of the 120 billion, only 16 of it is TikTok. So 16 divided by 120 is 13.3%. What if ByteDance is worried because if we buy TikTok in the States and we do a TikTok files, and if we find out who did what with TikTok, what if China's like, there is no, what if Xi calls ByteDance and says, listen, I don't give a shit how much they're going to pay you. You can't sell. Because if you sell, I'm shutting down your other practice in China. Because there's no way in the world, what, how much dirt you think there is if you buy TikTok and you're able to see the level of communication between China and TikTok, how much dirt and credibility you think they'll lose if we see clear communication between China telling how to groom and destroy American kids? How much credibility will China you lose if we identify that? It will make the Twitter files look like a jaywalker. That's exactly okay. what I'm thinking. So from my perspective... As a skeptic, as a strategist, as a person that's thinking from the business standpoint, China shouldn't let U.S. buy TikTok. Uh, and I just walked you through the economic yeah. of the U.S. Uh, U.S. audiences here. The bigger one is this would be a controversy of Internet. This is major thing. This is like atomic spy case between countries. Yes. So th- that's the part that concerns me with this, because if they all of a sudden say, OK, no problem, we're out. Don't worry about it. We're not selling. What statement does that send? Who gets all that power? What stock that goes up immediately overnight if that were to take place? I don't know. I think there's a lot of guys right now. And by the way, you know what names were coming up that wanted to buy this? Of course, Mnuchin uh, mm-hmm. had the name on the list. I know Rumble made a nice, friendly offer, but they're going to need a lot more cash than that. Larry Ellison and Walmart together, they're on the list as well. Larry wants the retail power in the audience of Walmart, but he already owns a server business. That's right. You were saying that the other day. And also, Microsoft is interested as well. And let's not forget that Microsoft outbid. I don't know who it was they outbid when they, uh, when they won over LinkedIn. And I think they bought LinkedIn for, what, $30, 35000000000 billion? And they also own Slack. They have a whole, they have been successfully running services like that. <sighs> yeah, but it, okay. So who would you feel comfortable, who would you feel comfortable TikTok actually buying TikTok. Who would you say I wouldn't mind that company buying TikTok? Because like, it would it would reveal the gamesmanship taking place behind closed doors with China. And who would be the last person you would want buying TikTok? I, I'd probably put Larry Last. I'd put excuse me. I'd put um Larry uh, Ellison last. No, no, no. I'd, I'd want put, him at the top of he, the list. You know, he's first. I'd have Microsoft and Mnuchin last because I think they'd cover it up and I would take Larry and Walmart at the top of the list because I think Trump would get straight answers from them. I want Mark Zuckerberg nowhere near owning TikTok. I don't oh, know. He already has a monopoly. Right. With hell no. Everything that's going on with I don't think Meta and Facebook. Facebook's Thanks, not Tom. on the list at all. And uh, and Instagram. Don't they also oh. own WhatsApp? Well, I, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't want. I don't want to create a bigger monopoly that we already have in America. I right don't think now. Facebook would bother because remember it was Biden's uh, Department of Commerce and Federal Trade Commission that blocked Spirit Southwest. They would no way allow Mark to buy this. And I, and I think because you said this earlier, Pat, when you asked uh, who's the biggest threat right now to the administration, all that, and I, you guys said Kamala, which I, she's up there for me. But I think it's it's Elon that poses the biggest threat because. Think about it. The, the free free speech platforms. I know people keep bringing up China and all this money. At the end of the day, it's the free speech platforms like X and Rumble. They're coming after especially those two because they counter their propaganda. OK, we're seeing it right now with the bloodbath crap. X is the only thing about it. If X didn't exist, if X wasn't. Oh, my God. Think about this, guys. If X wasn't on. They would block all those stories, and right now, Trump would be getting into even more trouble. Because think about it. The deep state, 
at, say what you want. They're in desperation mode, okay? They're looking for any angle, okay, to alter uh, this thing before November. The only way they can get away with stealing the election is they cut out everybody's tongues, cut out, stop X, stop Rumble, stop all this shit to get to regain their monopoly on the on the narrative that the public is seeing. That's the that that to me is the biggest threat is letting us talk because if this stops Tom, before. The next couple months, because when's the, when the bill it, it passed where and Senate is going to the House, the TikTok ban. Where, where is I know it passed one level. It, it passed in Congress yeah, and then it goes to Congress. The and we're going no, to the Senate, yeah. December, but the majority. Think about it. And I, I said this last week. Remember that. Anytime the- Nancy Pelosi is like, hey. Their right to, you know, my other fr- whenever they say my other my friends on the other side of the aisle, if they're agreeing with those people, it's not a good sign. That's the threat is us being able to do this mm-hmm. and see their bullshit. Well, by the way, you, you're talking about TikTok files. I think that'd be incredible to find oh. out what the hell that is. But the Twitter files, did you see what's going on between Matt Taibbi and Musk? You know, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, when the Twitter files came out and it revealed that basically 90 plus percent of Twitter was voting Democrat. I think it was 97 percent of basically how much suppression there was. The New York Post stories, all this. Matt Taibbi was sort of lauded as a hero. Right. But now there's actually revealing the exact opposite. Matt Taibbi, who basically is Substack writer, he's sort of garnered a lot of praise as being a free speech absolutist, especially during the Twitter files, quote unquote, Twitter files, journalist Matt Taibbi. Quote unquote, Musk proved to be very disappointing on free speech issue. Now, this is someone that basically uh, Musk was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize for his contribution to free speech and to uh, Earth. Um, And then here's Matt Taibbi's quote. I do I do believe that Elon Musk proved to be very disappointing on the free speech issue, which is sort of shocking during appearance on our friend News Nation's Cuomo's podcast. All of us who worked on the Twitter files felt the same way. We went in feeling tremendously optimistic that he actually meant a lot of the things he said about being in favor of all legal speech and being free speech absolutist and all those other things. However, that proved not to be the case. He is currently disenfranchising thousands of Substack writers, including me, and no one seems to care in the press. This is what Matt Ty. What does he mean by that? What what does he mean by doing the... uh disenfranchising what does he mean by that what are they doing be specific yeah that this is what i want to know that's i'm reading the headlines here but i, I want to know why he went from being so optimistic okay, to go being so let's see what it says right there so on the other hand you know it's a interview that Elon was on concerned speech he was asking more hate speech which is legal in the united states and the question why aren't you doing more to moderately oh this is the don lemon interview, don lemon interview. Oh, i watched this whole thing yesterday by the yeah. way mm-hmm. did you guys have a chance to watch it i thing? was gonna ask you do, do you think this is a concern did you watch it tom i watched Every I clip. I have not watched the whole okay. interview. I saw it. I, I want to ask you, since you, you saw the whole thing, you, yeah. didn't, you didn't watch the I watched the, the whole thing every second. Yeah. Do you think this entire ruse of all that, all this Don Lemon situation from him going to X, from him uh, asking for all that stuff to interview, was it all a plan to, and then go to CNN and interview? Was it all a plan from Don Lemon? And who'd you say was wrote, Elon said that he wrote all of this? Jeff Zucker. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Zucker wrote the question. I personally think he was a plan, and this was all set up to try to expose. Elon, what you saw it, what do you think? Well, I, I mean, I wrote notes if you want me to kind of Please. go through a couple I'm, things. I, that I we was have. interested so, to see what you were going to so, say. So, you know, uh, 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 Musk uh, uh, and him are going back and forth. At the beginning, it was a little bit easier when the interview started, but you can tell from Musk's face something ha- You know how sometimes you watch a podcast or you watch a show, but you don't know what happened 30 minutes prior to the podcast, yep. right? You're kind of like, uh, some happen, okay? You watch uh, me do a video, and you're like, why does Pat seem like this right before? You watch Joe, you're like, oh, something happened with you. These are human beings. They're going through something. So Musk, something happened with Musk walking into that meeting. Maybe they had made an offer, and then Lemon right before. I remember one time one of my guys, in, <laughs> one of my guys, uh, uh, Jennifer and I have a dinner with this one of, our, one of our guys. Five minutes before our dinner, he sends the most ridiculous email, just, and then a minute after his email, anyway, so we get this email, and I'm reading this email right before we go to dinner, and I go to dinner, I said, what, what, you set up this dinner, yes, why are you acting like we're all good, but you just emailed me something like that, <laughs> oh, I, I was just, you know, I was just, I said, no, 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 Th- that was a 10-page email. Holy crap. So what was this all about? That was a Don Lemon moment. Yeah. In that moment, I'm like, what are you doing? 
Like you're playing games here? You think like this is like an act? Like we're trying to build a company here. So Musk probably had something happen right before. Maybe the offer was made to Musk right before they sat down. Yeah. And he's sitting there saying, you're asking me for a private jet. You're asking me for a day of massages and alcohol for you and your boyfriend. And you're asking me for... Five million dollars of te- Tesla Please. share or what? X share you, you and a super customized a cyber truck. Right. Yeah, <laughs> cyber you kind of like what is this guy talking about? Anyways, let me and read some of the stuff for you. So he says, to, uh, uh, Elon says, Twitter was a left leaning company before I bought it, and then Don Lemon says, How do you figure? What makes you think it was a left leaning company? And Elon's like, What do you mean? Everybody knew. He says, uh, Wait, I don't understand why you would think Twitter was left leaning before you bought it. Elon says. Do you realize 99%, he says 99% of the money from Twitter went to the Democratic Party. Don Lemon says, but that's the company. He says, no, it's the employees. Yeah. And then Don Lemon says, well, let me ask you a different question. <laughs> so he yeah, kind of yeah. got away from that. So right yeah. there, Elon, check uh, with that one. Will you announce who you vote for? He says, uh, "Did you? are you going to give money to Trump? And he's trying to kind of get that. Okay, fine. You're p- pushing for some information there. No problem. He says, I will announce who I vote for. I can tell you I'm leaning away from Biden, okay? Yeah. But I will announce who I'm voting for and why. I will explain it. So Elon Musk is saying this. So probably closer to the end of the year, he's going to explain to election time. And then he says, Tesla, Tesla, any new updates with Tesla? Specifically, the uh, 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 what's his name? Don Lemon says, after the stock's been doing so bad the last six months. And then Elon says, well, you know, whenever you look at company stocks, never judge it based on a stock. The job is to improve the company and pop, 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 pop. He says, okay, so what are you doing? He says, we're about to do something. He says, the cyber truck is a project that we've been working on for 10 years. He says, it's very hard to have a project like that. That's a once in a decade type of a thing. And it's a very big deal for what we built with cyber truck. But he says, we have something coming up that has never existed before. And then Don Lemon says, which great question he asks, is this flying car? He says, maybe. Yeah. So it was a very interesting moment. And then he says, something that's never existed before. He said, well, there'll be a steering wheel. He says, not a steering wheel, steering wheel, but there's yeah. going to be something to it, right? And then he says, uh, you have a lot of lawsuits. How do you relax? Now, obviously, you're asking an annoying question when you're saying you have a lot of lawsuits. How do you l- relax? But he's going, so you're wondering, maybe this is a nice question he's asking. Yeah. So how do you cope with it? What yeah. do you do? And he says, is that why you take so many drugs? Yeah. What a thing to, I mean, you're like, you're mm-hmm. thinking you're going to a place. That's gotcha, gotcha, And then he gotcha, says, gotcha. Uh, why do you stay up so late at night? Oh, uh, when, when you tweet a lot of these things, when you tweet a lot of these things late nights, are you drunk when you're tweeting? Yeah. He goes, I don't are you using drunks? He says, no, I don't drink that much. He says, the drugs that you use, you know, do you, uh, you know, uh, uh, flirt or participate with a lot of drugs? And then anyways, he's saying what he's saying. Then Don brought up the replacement theory yeah. then tied it to Jews. <laughs> and then he's like, wait, tied to Jews? No. The, the 10 million people that are coming here, they're going to vote Democrat. He says, how do you know? He says, what do you mean, how do I know? He's asking questions as if he says, that's what they're going to vote for. He said, but how do you know they're going to vote for that? What makes you think they're going to vote, vote, uh, vote for the left? And then he says, uh, uh, he says, well, you know, we're both, uh, 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 sci- uh, what do you call it, uh, freedom of speech. He said, but why do you let these people say what they're saying? And he shows these pictures. And then Elon says, yeah, we allow those things to exist and we let people to talk. He says, but you said you're for, you know, minimizing hate speech. He says, no. You used the word mod- beautiful line. Maybe the best line Elon used in the entire show was okay. this. Moderation is a propaganda for censorship. Wow. He says, you want censorship. I want freedom of speech. Don Lemon says, no, I don't. He says, yeah, you do. You want censorship. Rob, if you can find that clip, it's a beautiful clip. If you just type in moderation is a propaganda you just type it on X and you'll find it. If you, yeah, moderation propaganda, it, it comes up as right there. Just just play this beautiful clip. How, how long is it? Oh, shit. It's six minutes and 54. <laughs> is it 54 seconds or six minutes and 54 six seconds? Six minutes and 54. Yeah, you, you, we don't want to do that because then we're going to have to. Well, play. Let me see where it starts from because if, if it's the right place, it's a beautiful, beautiful clip. Let's just try it one more time, Rob. Press the square in the middle. Press the square in the middle. Doesn't let you? No? Mm, see if you can make it work. It's okay. Anyways. Uh, Digital chastity belt. Do you think that, do you, you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? 
I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown. Uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. And we don't want to put out that on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech is gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says yeah, it went down. Lot fake news. The, the study from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue found that anti-Semitic tweets doubled from June 22 to February 2023. One study reported that as many as 86% of the posts reported for hateful content remained up after being reported. Hate speech. Just a study. On the platform. That's all. all I have to say is it's a study. Is up. Much. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts, but not count the number of views. So what matters is, was that uh, post given high visibility or what did, did like one person see it? Uh, and if you look at the number of views of how, 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 many, how many times was his content I, I, viewed I, on our platform, it is down substantially. Yeah. Well, that's not was what the Don study says. Don is such a like transparency. I'm going to show you this. Such a you can get a study that, that, that will tell you whatever you want. But this, 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 this is these are just a handful of extremely. If you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets, and as of this morning, they're still on X. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you? Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. Good job. These have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not no. illegal, but yeah, shut they're up. hateful Rod, and they fast can Fast forward they 10 seconds at a time to see if we can get to it. Radicalizing. So, so Don, you have sense for censorship. Well, don't there, you think there's there's censorship is a, it's a, moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. Oh, bingo. Oh. Don't you think free well, let, it, well, let it go and watch what he does. Thing, right? Or not, you know. Look, if something's not illegal, censorship. we're going to take it down. If it's not illegal, then we're putting our thumb on the scale and we're being censors. God, I love him. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech. I mean, you don't put out child pornography. That's not... It's illegal. That's illegal. That's illegal. What, a that's what an idiot. Sister. I'm just saying. You no, I literally... Don, you know, I, I literally said, if, if something is legal... Okay, you can pause it at this point. No wonder why they fired By the him. way, it continues, oh. and, then, and then Elon says, you desperately want censorship, and I don't. And then he talks about blacks at Tesla, and he brings up racism, and Elon says the most important thing there. He says, just so you know, our entire families at one point were slaves, yours and mine. It, it, well, yeah, I, I know. So no, 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 no. Just so you know, everybody's family at some point <laughs> were, slaves. were slaves. Yeah. <laughs> Period. And he didn't know how to answer that. And he changed the subject there as well. And in the ending of it, which gets very, very uncomfortable. Rob, if you can go to the interview Go to our, go to his uh, tweet, Don Lemon's tweet, and go to an hour, three minutes. Uh, uh, if you can go to his uh, 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 hour and three minutes, uh, go to hour and three minutes. It's pretty much all the way at the end. And this is when you start seeing him like he is just done. And he's saying, look, man, we only got a few more seconds, a few more minutes here. Hour 325. Go to one hour 325 so we can save that additional 25 seconds. There you go. Play from right here. Watch oh, this. Good job, Rob. And I feel very optimistic about the future of the X Bowl. Okay. Listen, I'm not, I'm, honestly, I'm not meaning to offend you. You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? Look at this. I was born that way. And I had a tough childhood. You did? So, yeah. How um, so? Come on. Like, like, Walter Isaacson goes into it in the book. And, and we only have a couple minutes left. So, all right. Too long to, to describe. Uh, so the one or two questions I can do, and then we'll have to call it. I, okay. Again, I don't mean to upset you. Why are you? <laughs> yes, you, you just He's such a prick, dude. No, I, I have a whole room full of people waiting to meet with me. I have a whole room okay. full, full of people waiting for me. Okay. All right. I understand that. Um, He's turning so red. You, when you talk about, you said you were born that way. Is that? Um, it's just uncomfortable. Did you, you think that the way that you see the world? has to do with your relationship with anyone, perhaps your, your father or someone in, in your family? Look, he just told you, go yeah. read the book. I think we're all affected by the people we grew, we grew up with. Um, my aspiration is to this is beautiful. Uh, Listen, beautiful. do whatever it takes to extend, the, extend consciousness into the future. Beautiful. That's my goal, um, to make life multiplanetary as part of extending constant consciousness into the future. Has this, has, have the past few years and considering everything that's gone on, has it been difficult for you and your family life? It's been okay. 
So then how do you see your legacy, Elon? He how, doesn't give a shit. How do you see how well, people see it in the... First of all, I say that the... Um, Listen if I this. died knowing that I that I did what Such was right or, or did my best to do what was right, good for you, and bro. Even if in the history books they said I did, did wrong, good for I would you. still feel okay about that. Freaking I care about the reality God. of goodness, not the perception of it. Um, I think we should view civilization uh, as tenuous, as fragile. Um, <laughs> if you if you do study history broadly, you'll see that there's a rise in yeah. civilizations. They don't always go up. Um, so we should do everything we possibly can to preserve. Uh, and, and extend civilization as we know it, yeah. um, and improve it. Um, it's become more enlightened over time. And we uh, therefore want to address civilizational risks. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we don't have, for example, demographic collapse, which is the case in a lot of countries, uh, just very low birth rate. Um, we we want to avoid, obviously avoid World War III, anything that is a civilizational risk. That's what I care about, civilizational risks. Um, how do we extend consciousness into the future such that we are able to better understand the, the nature of reality. Yeah. That's yeah. what I care about. That's my motivation. I know you have to go. If you'll just give me, a, uh, I'll do a rapid fire thing here. Is, if there, is there anything that you would change about um, anything that you've done in your life in the past or recently? Um, I've made many mistakes over the years. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and fix them, uh, but I don't have a time machine. Thank you. But I'm working. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, Don so Lemon, such an unattractive human being. He's just a person. Just inside. Like, you could just tell pretentious. Just He's just a prick. Like, you wouldn't want to hang out with that guy ever. Who are his friends? Like, just a nasty, like, like that, I think that's what, going back to the point, I think this was all a, a plan to have this, to make him look like he's this guy, and then go back to CNN where they fired his ass, and then get an interview with them. It's all BS propaganda bullshit, which all goes into, the goal is to take down X, make him look like, he, they, were, he, they were trying to get him, he, this prick was trying to make him say something to catch him, like, oh, he's pro-anti-Semitic, he's, he's pro this. He's a threat to... The power and how they want to hold it. He's a threat to that. Ugh, it just so don't let me go away. Is to be attacked. And we started this conversation with Matt Taibbi, and Matt Taibbi used a word, disenfranchise. And I, I know what he's talking about. And Matt Taibbi is weighing into an argument on a self interest economic angle. Matt Taibbi is a, has a strong business pat on Substack newsletter. He's got a subscriber base. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Twitter, a good amount. It's a, a good amount. Yeah. Twitter has a competitor called Notes. And on Twitter, you cannot link out necessarily or embed on Substack newsletters. And there are people that are leaving Substack because Substack doesn't give them the right platform. Glenn Greenwald left Substack, went independent. Grit Newsletter, one of the largest um, independent financial newsletters, has left Substack. Matt Taibbi is on Substack. Well, when Matt Taibbi says he's disenfranchised us, he hasn't disenfranchised us. If you want to use notes, you want to use it on Twitter, you can use it there. I can't go get Google Docs and insert it into Microsoft Office. I have to choose one or the other. It's a competitive world. And Matt Taibbi is uh, being very disingenuous there on a self-interested economic level about the underlying competition between Notes, which is on Twitter, and Substack. And that was woven into the story. The real story is that I do not think Don Lemon, you know, I think he had help with those questions, and I think he had a motive. Yeah. You know, you know, the, the, Look at the difference approach. Cuomo interviews Tucker. Okay. Lemon interviews Musk. It's fair to say those two people are not liked by CNN. Okay. Yeah. I, I, is that fair to say that, Very guys, fair, with everybody? Yes. Okay. Very fair. Is it even fair to say that maybe Tucker is more hated at CNN than Musk is? Yes. Yeah. I think that's probably... Because it's a direct competitor. Yes. Musk is somebody else, but you hate Tucker because Tucker's a direct competitor. And guess what it was? Great conversation. Phenomenal. Respectful. Afterwards, they both had good things to say about each other. They move on, right? It wasn't a, let me then go on CNN and say, hey, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this, right? Now, this is, this is how Chris has re reacted so far with everything that's been going on. It's been very consistent on the way he's handled things. Don... The way he interviewed, you know, uh, uh, Elon was just from a standpoint of being a 
you know, and, and by the way, uh, this is going to sound weird when I say this. It's going to sound very weird when I say this. I actually enjoyed watching the interview. Uh, the, the Don Lemon? I actually enjoyed watching the interview. Why? Because uh, uh, I, I love to see, um, this is what America's allergic to, both the right and the left. They're allergic to these types of conversations because both the far right and the far left is allergic to any idea that challenges any of their existing points. They're allergic to it. They don't even want to hear it. They don't even want to get close to it. I want to entertain it. One of my favorite debates I watched was the Hitchens brothers debating. One was an atheist. The other one was a Catholic, if I'm not mistaken. It's like three-hour debate. It's a beautiful thing to watch. We are way too much about our echo chambers today. And unfortunately, half the battle why Musk did what he did is probably because of Lemon and the way he handled what he did with his ask. I'm, I'm willing to tell you, if the guy took a different approach and he didn't ask for what he asked for, he probably would still have a relationship. But by the way, when people say, you know, on CNN, they said, uh, 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 Jim Acosta, not Jim Acosta, what's the other guy's name? Not Jim Acosta, there was another guy um, uh, 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 that said, you know, here's uh, whatever happened to freedom of speech. Elon left the interview up. Mm. There is no, not, he just doesn't want to pay for this talent. Of course. He left the interview up. It's still freedom of speech. He just doesn't want to pay the guy for it. So good for Elon for not doing anything with it that stayed up. And I uh, actually enjoyed watching the interview. I learned a lot about Lemon and what his motives are, that he is still loyal to CNN. 100%. Yeah. And, but, but when you say, uh, and Adam, I'm sorry to cut you off. When you, when you say, okay, the left and the right, and that's, we need to get the common ground. But what the, what the left is pushing right now, how can, what are, what from what they're doing can make you guys or any of you say, okay, I could see how they could with the open border and the lawlessness and the nothing that they're doing in my eyes would make the other side go, oh, okay, open border because you guys love humanity. Okay, that's why you're letting them in. No, everything to me that they're doing in front of our face is to destroy the country. Where, where's, the, where's the balance in that? I'm saying the right has their own problems as well, but every single thing that the left is doing right now Right now, I don't see how the other side can compromise in their thoughts and say, you know what, Tom? Yeah, okay. I can see why you want 20 million people, illegals, into this country by the end. Of, I, I, I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see how that side could, could negotiate with the other side or, or, or be understanding. I don't Look, get it. We de- listen, if we're going to save this republic that we have, mm-hmm. we're only going to do it through conversations. And then from there, the audience being loud and agreeing or disagreeing with whoever it is. Any decision, any opinion that I have, you have the right to do whatever you want to do with it. That doesn't bother me. People think it does anything to me. It does nothing to me. We need to be more in an environment for us to be able to have these types of discussions. And it's happening. Big part of it is because Elon bought Twitter. Mm -hmm. If Elon doesn't buy Twitter, these types of discussions don't take place. Imagine if Elon doesn't buy Twitter. (laughs) Where the hell is Tucker Carlson right now? Nowhere. Actually, think about it. Elon doesn't buy Twitter. A year, it's coming up, one year anniversary of Tucker getting fired. If Elon doesn't buy Twitter, where is Tucker's content going? Valuetainment. Valuetainment, hopefully. <laughs> no, good call. But well, No, but you're right. He's not out there. I'll just say one thing. I fully agree with you, PBD, that we need more conversation. We need more dialogue. We even need more debate. Everything that, you doing, that you're doing here at Valuetainment on PBD, that what we stand for, whether it's Candace and Cuomo, whether it's you know someone on the far left, on the far right, whether it's an Alex Jones, whether it's a whoever. That's what we need more of the other side if they don't agree with you. I thought the Cuomo and Tucker interview was fantastic. I, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was great. And Cuomo asked him point blank because Cuomo's like a dude. Tucker's kind of like, look, t- one of the smartest guys I know. That laugh still makes me very uncomfortable. He asked him point blank, like, why are you, why are you talking so much shit about me? You know what Tucker said? Honestly. Says, I'm just a dick. Yeah. Well, he's he being honest. That, Tucker, yeah. I'm just a I'm dick. I'm being real. This Thank God I I've got a great wife who tells me to be less of a dick. Yeah. He goes, you know, I was going to come after you is what Como said. And he goes, Jeff Zucker told me personally not to attack you. And, and Tucker was like, yeah, I don't really like that guy. But what was the, the line you said that you liked from Elon, the moderation line? Yeah, moderation, moderation is a... Uh, uh, propaganda for censorship. I agree with that because we've seen this, we've experienced this before. A lot of a lot of people on the right have, ex- have experienced moderation, moderators out there. Uh, the one thing I would condone is there's a difference, and they keep trying to get Elon with the hate speech thing. Remember the interview like six months ago, and he's like, I "Hate speech is is pervasive all over." But name yeah. something. He's like, ah, "I don't really know," and he got yeah. caught. There's a difference between hate speech. Uh, 
inciting violence or calling for the incitement of violence and actually a hate crime. You know, uh, the, I, I firmly believe some of the toughest people in the world are YouTube commenters. They are so freaking tough. And all the all the beautiful things they say it's out there. It's happening right yeah, now. Exactly. All the beautiful things they say. They'll, say, they'll never say anything I, to your face. guess what? But I will say I fully condone it. Let people say what they want to say. I love it. Sunlight is the greatest transparency. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next story. Tom, I'm going to the Hurt story. Hurt CEO Stephen Schill resigns uh, after EV push goes bust. Um, This is when the whole thing was going on with Tesla stuff, right? So Hertz, one of the four largest rental companies in the world, is replacing its CEO after the company reversed its bet on EV rentals over increasing costs. Stephen Schur will step down as the Hertz uh, Global Holding Inc.'s uh, CEO and member of the company's board of directors. Effective March 31st, the company announced firing Friday Schur led Hertz uh, uh, for just over two years after spending nearly three decades at Goldman Sachs. Schur's resignation comes as a car rental company struggles with the higher repair costs and low demand for EV rentals. In January, Hertz announces finalizing uh, filings that it made strategic decision to sell approximately 20,000 EVs from its U.S. fleet, or about one-third of its global EV fleet, and to instead invest in gas-powered cars. Tom? So I dug into this, and I found about four angles that I thought are very, very interesting. First of all, when you see a headline like this, just keep, keep asking why, America. Just keep asking why. Why, why, why? was the guy fired? Look. Well, he was fired why because uh, our fun. bet on EV didn't work. 20,000 EVs. Pat, let me ask you a question. What CEO is allowed to buy 20,000 EVs without board approval? What CEO would have had that strategy mm-hmm. in place without board approval? Love the angle you're taking. And how many of those board members were probably ESG or DEI or going with green? How many of them? So what kind of pressure did that CEO maybe have to, we got to be green, we got to be doing this, we have to be doing our part. How many of them were there? And 20,000 cars. This didn't happen in a vacuum. So here's the, the guy gets fired because he get rid of it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are they getting rid of the cars? Because there were two problems with EVs. You know, we've been putting edicts. You know, what did um, what is that idiot that runs California? Uh, Newsom? Yeah, yeah, that guy. Um, Newsom. Remember, Newsom. Remember he, Sorry. Remember Newsom. He said that by 2025, this percent of cars have to be EV. And then, you know, they're pointing out, uh, sir, we don't have enough power in California that's currently being made by our power plants for people to charge the cars. So people would rent EVs, Pat, and you know what would happen? They, they couldn't get them charged or they would charge them. They would find out that the little charger at the Hilton was a low uh, amp, just a little overnight charger, and it wouldn't give it a full charge. So people would run out of charge on their EVs. If you haven't driven an EV before, you don't moderate yourself. Rob's got an EV. I have an EV. And so what happened was consumers had a challenge with them because there wasn't enough charging infrastructure. So all these edicts about green cars is ahead of the number. Let's put it this way. Everyone has to use an EV, but enough service stations aren't built to gas them up. Let's just think of it that way. So they have that problem. And the other thing is Hertz. Hertz has been getting its ass kicked by Lyft and Uber, eating into their business hired three years ago. What was Hertz doing before that to compete with the disruption of things like Turo and Uber and Lyft. So this guy comes in, they, they take a swing at EVs and a bunch of DEI people on the board. And now guess what? This guy gets after, he had three decades at Goldman Sachs. This guy had an incredible career and is judged by being a really smart financial guy. Now, maybe he's not a good operator CEO, but I think there's a lot of things that have been going on hurts here. And the board that's firing him needs to look at themselves. You were getting your butt kicked by disruptors for seven years before you hired this guy. You went DEI on EVs. Come on, you can't put it all on this guy. Mm-hmm. That's can what I, that's I, what I see. Can I add just one thing to this? Yeah. You know, they talk about the agenda or the message, basically what they're pushing, whether it's the Green New Deal. You see this story on page 11 where it's on Biden. Biden wants 50,000 new climate activists and the consequences will be devastating. President Biden's budget proposal unveils an $8 billion allocation for the Climate Corps program aiming to annually recruit 50,000 government workers by 2031 to, co- to combat climate change. This initiative supported by the Green New Deal, advocates like AOC and Ed Markey triples Biden's initial workforce proposal. So this is all kind of part of the DEI, ESG, woke narrative, climate change that we learned, you know, basically after communism fell 
all the communists, all the Marxists basically needed a new agenda to get a hold of. And they all overnight sort of became global climate change activists, global warming activists. So we all want the earth. We all want the earth to do well. We have our one planet, despite what Elon Musk is working on sending us to Mars. But a lot of these people are the same people that are basically trying to ruin the Mona Lisa, all the protests out there, doing the mashed potatoes, doing the gravy, killing the art in the name of So, so here's uh, a question for you. Let me ask you a question. Yes, Let sir. me ask you a question. Do you think the reason why they don't like the CEO is because he's going away from EV? Like, Rob, can you check Hertz's ESG score? Tap in Hertz's uh, ESG score. I'm actually curious. ESG score. And let's see where they go. Hertz ESG score is what? 18.3. Low. 69 out of 40, uh, 405. I'm not surprised. Why? Because this guy, who was the former Goldman Sachs guy of decades, is at Hertz. Um, you all of a sudden decide to buy 20,000 EVs. What percentage of those 20,000 EVs were, uh, uh, were Teslas, Tom? The, well, there has to be a high percentage. Okay. Well, can you can you uh, search? I'll go look up. Yeah, if you could look up what percentage of the EVs. And, Rob, don't do it on this page because we're going to come back to this page. So keep this page. Go do it on a new uh, new window if you could. There you go. So if you can just search what percentage of the 20,000 hertz EVs are uh, uh, Tesla. Yeah, there you go. So let's see. So uh, Tesla makes up 80%. 80%. Okay. Wow. So wow. go back to the uh, ESG score. All right, so what's Hertz's ESG score there? 18.3. Can you pull up Tesla's ESG score? Go to Tesla's ESG score. Tesla ESG score. Uh, there you go. Let's zoom in. Look at Tesla's. Medium. Okay. So a company that has a low gives money to the most hated guy in ESG that he says ESG equals the devil. Yeah. Elon Musk. And DEI must die. De uh, DEI must die, right? Or whatever he put in there. He yeah. said one of the, I think he said Soros is, there's something there with Soros or ESG. You're very accurate yeah. in your description. So, so 20,000 orders, 80% Tesla. You help Tesla, right. who doesn't like ESG. And now you, as the CEO, say you want to revert back to gas powered cars helping oil people in Texas? How dare you do such a thing to do something that's going to go against our ESG agenda? We have to replace this guy. I don't know. There's a part of me that this guy was a CEO making a proposal saying, guys, I think if this is the direction you want to go, let's buy the best ESG. Let's buy the best EVs out there, which is Tesla. Oh, now that we found out there's not enough chargers and cars are being left behind and people are coming back mm. because they're forgetting to charge their cars. Because the biggest problem with them having a lot of these Teslas is people who never driven a Tesla before, guess what they don't think about? Charging. Charging a car because you don't yeah. know how to do it. First time I bought an i8, did I, was it an i8? It was my first EV I bought. It was a... Yeah. Can we say the name? Yeah. It was a BMW. Yep. BMW i8. It was an Mission Impossible movie. I'm like, what a freaking car, car this is. Sick. Yeah. So I bought the i8. I Beautiful loved it. Beautiful car. Yeah. And, and, and I'm driving. I'm like, so I have to charge this? <laughs> like You have to charge. I'm like, even a Ferrari right now, the SF90. Charge you have it. to charge it. Yeah. Right. So the battery like, dies. But I'm not used to this, this, this kind of stuff. So my brain's not going to be sitting there thinking about this. So... But to me, I don't know. I don't know if I put this guy as a bad CEO. I just think he tried to go to a place to try to solve it. But unfortunately, maybe this guy was more logical, not enough ESG, and they didn't like him. They said, let's get rid of him. That's kind of what I see of this guy. And, and by the way, it was a purchase order in 2022 for 100,000 Tesla Model 3s. Wow. And they can't take the, their economic status at Hertz, they can't take possession of it. So people couldn't charge them. They're going back to gas. But the underlying thing is they are in, in these news and no one wants to talk about the underlying thing. They're getting their butt kicked by Turo, Uber and Lyft. All right, let's go to the next story. Weird story. Parents brace for impact. Earmuffs kids. Lily Allen says having children totally ruined her career <laughs> and parents can't have it all. Career coaches say she's right. Again, folks, th th relax because this is insider. Uh, insider, the person that probably wrote this doesn't have any kids. Definitely and not. probably, I don't, you know, this is speculation. We'll actually verify that as well. So Lily Allen openly discusses the impact of parenthood on her career, bluntly stating, yes, my children ruined my career. And rejecting the notion of having it all, asserting, quite frankly, you can't, as she reflects on her decision to prioritize her children 
over pop stardom, emphasizing some people choose their career over their children. That's their prerogative. But my parents were quite absent when I was a kid, and I feel like that left some nasty scars that I'm not willing to repeat on mine. Courier coaches Elizabeth Pearson and Sarah Madeira echo Allen's sentiment, acknowledging the challenges faced by working parents, with Pearson emphasizing the struggles of balance and family and career responsibilities, stating it doesn't mean we don't love our kids, but if people think that kids don't tie an anchor around your ankle while you're trying to swim in an ocean with crashing waves, they're high. Tom, thoughts on this? Well, I used to wonder why filicide in the United States was up. F-I-L-I-C-I-D-E. Just go look that up. And now I think I understand. <laughs> I think I understand why filicide in the United States is up. But I think what a horrible thing. If you're trying to set, you know, I love you, I care for you, you know, now that you're in my life, I'm going to do what I can to raise you and to give you a vision and a last name you'll be proud of. And then, you know, this is horrible, you know. Um, you know, how can you hate your kids like this? How can you just, you know, not like your kids? What do you think is going to happen? It's just horrifying to me that that's what I think about it. And now these kids are going to grow up and they're not going to care for their parents. They're not going to take care of their parents in their retirement. What a surprise. Look, uh, I have this conversation. Other, um, what video is this, Rob? What video is, is this her saying that? Yes, this is Lily. I actually want to see how she Mm -hmm. says it. Go ahead. I never really had a strategy when it comes to career. Uh, but yes, my children ruined my career. What the? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love them and they complete me. But in terms of like, you know, pop stardom, totally ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a good answer. I'm so happy to hear someone say that. Everyone's like, no, of course not. Does not mix. <laughs> and, and really annoys me when people say you can have it all because, quite frankly, you can't. You and, can't. you know, some people choose their career over their children, and that's their prerogative. But, you know, my parents were quite absent when I was a kid, and I feel like that really left some, like, nasty scars that I'm not willing to, you know, to repeat so, online. And so yeah. I chose stepping back and concentrating on them. And I'm glad that I've done that because I think they're pretty well-rounded people. By the way, it sounds yeah. worse than the way she exactly. did it. It sounds a lot less mean. and. But I do have thoughts on this as well. Go well, ahead. No, I, you can't, this is why you can't just read into the headlines because the headlines, basically, you would suppose that she hates her kids and she regrets having kids. She's actually saying the exact opposite. And she's basically saying what I tell women all the time is that I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very near to close to impossible as a woman that you can't have it all. You can't be the biggest pop star in the world, but then also be a good mother and be home with your children. It's impossible unless you're, you know, Joe Biden. You have a fake person out there running around yeah. like Vinny yeah. accuses Biden of. But Body you can't have it all. Five. Exactly. You can't you can't do it all. She's basically saying that the children ruined her career, meaning, she, look, if you're not familiar with Lily Allen, she was basically a British big singer. She was, you know, like Amy Winehouse, if you remember her, pretty big. This is like 2006, 2008. She had some massive songs uh, in the uh, early to mid-2000s. But, you know, I had a conversation on Manect yesterday. I mean, we've all done thousands plus Manects. You know, I would say the vast majority, 90% of the conversations I have are with men. Uh, and a lot of times it's, Money, success, vision, career, you know, self-improvement, all that. With women, it always gravitates back to family and kids. The conversation I had with the lady yesterday, it started off the conversation. She said, what's the best investment for me? Is it a whole life insurance or my 401k? That's how the conversation started. Do you know how the conversation ended? Mm. She, I said, well, what are you solving for? You're asking about insurance. You're asking about investments. Like, that's a very small part of what you're trying to do in your entire life. And I said, you know, a scale of 1 to 10, how happy – she's 33 years old. She's probably watching this right now. I won't say her name. I said, scale of 1 to 10, how much do you want a husband and family? She goes, 1,000. I go, how um, much of a focus is your career, is your job, get, you know, climbing up the corporate ladder, the hierarchy? She goes, yeah, like a, like a six. And I go, if you could make double what you're making now, double. She says she's making like 75, 80 grand. If you can make double, but never have kids in a family, how would you feel about that? She goes, I'd probably kill myself. Jeez. So every conversation that I have with women out there, especially as they're getting older, the young girls never listen to a 22-year-old girl, ever. 
They think they're going to be hot and young forever. They think they're never going to want kids. I promise you, once you start to hit that 30 or 40s, especially as a woman, that maternal instincts are going to kick in. Here's a woman. She said, I totally regret going to grad school. I spent way too much time on school. I was focused on my career. I'm literally thinking about, I would kill, this is facetious, kill myself if I don't have kids. Every conversation I have with a woman, especially on Manect, it always gravitates to they want to have a ideal family life kids. Now, I'm not saying that men aren't immune to that, but we all know the following, that women are beauty objects. They're meant to nurture what I and be know feminine. About men. How many men of these girls objects. you have on Manect, the calls, yes. that want to have kids, want to have kids with you? How, how many? Like how many are pitching? I'm trying to find zero. I'm I'm trying to be an uncle, totally man. I mean, this is like I got I got a Jew to my right and a Syrian to my left, and I'm trying to have uh, some nephews and nieces. Well, we should have another bed. But yeah, and, and we'll but, but, but you know what? A good follow up question would have been. I'm very very curious. Do you the, want to have a kid with me, like for yeah. for Adam? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If somebody asked her if you could go back. And that decision of having a kid or yeah. not, yeah. would you do it? She probably wouldn't have. No, no I think, she, that's, I think that's she would. The have. opposite of what she's saying, she's saying that I think she uh, would. You got to read the sarcasm. Yeah. You're a comedian to get yeah. that. She's basically saying the kids ruined her career because she couldn't do both. But she said, "They're my life. They're my joy. I wouldn't do this." I asked Candace Owens this exact same thing. Uh -huh. I said, "You're you killed it. You're massive. You know, if you can only do one or the other, be a career woman, boss, babe, CEO." Or wife and mother. She goes, wife and mother, 100, 100%. out of 100. Yeah. If you think that making money and doing the Chelsea Handler route as a woman is going to make you happy in the end, Me. you have another thing coming. You're right. Now, men just have the opportunity to wait a little while longer. Women can't wait until their 40s. Yeah. Some men like Vinny and I wait. Oh, my, my sperm are frozen right now. They're just in a little thing. I'm joking. I didn't freeze <laughs> my sperm. They're just it's like, the hey, like Don't kill guys. those embryos in Alabama, buddy. Yeah, no. I, I stand by what I said, but Lily Allen in particular, the back half of her answer, which I had not seen to the video, mm -hmm. uh, I respect the back half of her answer, and she moderated it and talked about them being her life and what she wants to do. But I stand by what I said about the people who – you know, decide that oh, having kids was a mistake because the me, my couldn't attain this or that. It's like, come on. Let's let's react to this, Rob. Go ahead and play this clip here. Go ahead. Hoda and Jenna. Women that are initiating divorces in this mm -hmm. country. I don't think the old statistics, I don't think that's how we think of it. You know, no, we tend to think of divorce as like um, an older man yeah. like leaving his, mm -hmm. you know, wife the or tropes. a younger woman. And it's really, it's really women are breaking and they're breaking. When you look at the statistics, they're breaking because of household chores, yeah. inequality, oh. Oh. because they're being held back in their careers, because men add seven hours of domestic labor a week oh to a woman's God. life Jeez. and a woman takes away like three hours from his life and that's adding hours that like he's not doing <laughs> you know so like these little inequalities add up and I think especially since pandemic women are just breaking yeah. and they want another way out and another way to live I like the title of this book because it's so and another way to live is to get a, a divorce that how I left Paul, and I, just I started my yes. life mm -hmm. as opposed to I started my life by getting married. That's the idea. Like you, you get married. So by the way, I gotta it. tell you, I think it should be illegal for women to just sit there and talk amongst each you other. You mean like the view? If you don't have like, one man to G check you, like the view, then they're just gonna go off on the anti patriarch rampage. Look, the whole point of having a guy with women is to basically say, yeah, I don't know about that feminist. Like to call them out because at the at the end of the day, they're all just gonna agree and realize the reality is women initiate seventy five to eighty five percent of divorce. They're the ones that file for divorce, not the men. So Wait, you, mean it, you mean to tell me you don't absolutely love the view with Whoopi and Joyce? I wish there? that there was a dude in the God, middle of the table to I, call I, out this woman's hypocrisy so, and ridiculousness. Yeah, there's a lot of hypocrisy here. Like we at the men add seven hours of domestic labor. I like to know what it is. You know, I, how, do, how does that add up? And men add three hours a week to the woman's wife. That's not true. It's two minutes and seven seconds three times a week. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean we add three hours? Yeah, what do we even talk about? Give what? it a break. Tom, did you just reveal a, a certain Rob, number? What? Rob and I understand. We're... They okay. text each other after two minutes. They're like, you done? Yeah, I'm done too. All right, bro. I'll see you tomorrow on the <laughs> nice, podcast. No, but you, you, Can we watch the Bond uh, but thing you, on you, you TNT? Know, you know, the, the, the thing is that you watch some like this, and you have two perspectives. One is saying, yeah, yeah, it did ruin my career. But guess what? If I had to do it all over again, I'd do it again, yeah. right? Because she is saying, 
but it's a choice I decided to make, right? So she's joking while she's saying that, but at the same time, while on the other side, it's like, no, that additional work and that labor, and this is why, and, you know, da-da-da, and, you know, and Schultz told a joke, which was freaking amazing, the joke that, that joke that he told. I love yes. that joke. I'm not going to say it, but he oh, said, yeah. said a joke that's... The yep. I and we joke. Is, yeah, I, yeah, I so loved good. that joke so when I heard it. I mean, it was, like, fantastic yeah. on how he gave credit, and then he's like, hey, how about this? But yeah, it, it, it's, it's, you're living in an era right now where people are so flipping confused. When we were coming up, I had a couple of my guys, and I said this to girls, and I said this to guys, any chance I get on who I was mentoring, I would always ask, who do you look up to? Like yesterday, we're having lunch with uh, six of our new guys who are in sales, who are you know, rising stars coming up. So I brought them to the house, and I do this on a monthly basis. I bring new stars of employees, and I bring them to the house and have lunch with them. And, you know, Alper makes his traditional, you know, Ugh. you know, food and we kind of go back and forth and have great conversations together. And one of the guys I asked, he was younger and his hair was a little bit, uh, he needed a haircut. Okay. And if you're in sales and you're sitting on talking to people, you got to be presentable. And I asked the question, I said, let me ask you, who do you look up to? Who's your male figure in your life? He said, what do you mean? I said, I want you to think about it because his female figure in his life was clear, mom. I said, who's the male example in your life that you follow? You know, for like one minute, he's just going like this, shaking his head. He can't think of anybody. Do you know how many people don't have that on the male or the female side? If you don't have an example, if you're dating a guy or a girl and they don't have a man or a woman that they look up to and what their values are, if you ask and he says something like, you know, this kid, uh, 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 hey, I follow such and such. And so who is this guy? I follow, you know, this is my example of a man. This is my example of a woman. Yeah, bro, I'm not for you. You go find somebody else or change the people you look up to. Our people are looking at the wrong people right now. And these people you look up to, they're setting a bad example and people are duplicating it. Kids need better examples of who to look up to. Because, but if they don't have it, they're going to be confused by messages like this to say, this is the right thing to do. By the way, this is not just kids. We think that just kids need better people to look up to. You know who else needs better people to look up to? Adults, married men, married women, mothers, fathers, businessmen, businesswomen. It doesn't matter what it is. Everybody needs better examples to look up to. And uh, the more and more I listen to Lily, Lily, good for you for, I think her daughters are 12 and 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And she seems like she's enjoying them. So more power to you. Respect to for Lily for doing what she's doing. Okay, let's go to the next one here. Guatemalan illegal migrant accused of killing veteran cop Freed. Okay, is there a video with this one uh, that you want to show? Was or? there one Rob where he's walking out? All right, so let me let me let me go with this, and then Vinny, I'm going to come to you. Okay. Virgilio Aguilar Mendez, a Guatemalan migrant, has uh -oh. been released after spending ten months in custody, accused of killing a veteran police Florida cop, Sergeant Michael. Uh, Konovich, the, the charges were dismissed by the 7th District State Attorney Office, citing Aguilar Mendez's as incompetence in stand trial due to language barriers and concerns about his intellectual capacity. The arrest, I can't believe what I just read right now. Yeah, that, the arrest stemmed from an incident in May of 2023 where Konovich uh, approached Aguilar Mendez over suspicious behavior. Body cam footage showed a struggle between them with officers eventually retaining Aguilar Mendez, who does not speak English. Minutes after the arrest, Kunovich released, suffered a fatal heart attack, despite Kunovich's cause for death being attributed to natural causes due to several heart disease. Concerns arise over the release amid a perceived migrant crime waves fueled by illegal border crossing. Vinny. Um, how many more of these stories are we going to have to see with them raising their middle fingers, beating the shit out of the cops. This is a, a, a clear cut. I, I called it the uh, I, the title is illegal migrant crisis. I know Pat, we always make fun of it because when Australians say, but but like, this guy illegally in the country, uh, the cops stopped him because he saw suspicious activity. Something was going on. By the way, he had a knife on him, so he gets into a scuffle. The cop get, has a heart attack. None of this happens. This moment, this incident doesn't happen if the illegal person 
isn't in the country. And his lawyer, that scumbag right there, is like, he, they violated his constitutional right. The Constitution, it doesn't apply to me for an illegal person that's not even, that didn't even come into this country legally. And that's, that's, that's one thing, okay? Uh, I, and I called it the illegal migrant. So in Chicago, I'm just going to go down the list. Rob, you don't, you don't have to show anything. In Chicago, okay, they're having an outbreak of measles, okay, in the city-run shelters. Now they're going to require migrants staying there to get the MM, uh, MMR vaccine to prevent further cases. This goes to show you that they're, they're putting them before us. And then, because I'm Adam, this is the next story, if you don't mind me, keep going, Pat. Keep going. An illegal migrant from Lebanon. Mind you, I could keep, there, there's hundreds of these stories. An illegal migrant from Lebanon was caught at the border. He admitted he's a Hezbollah terrorist hoping to make a bomb, and he was headed for New York. Do we have video on this? Uh, Rob, can I, you see if you can find video on this? Well, keep yeah, going. there's his photo. There's his photo right there. Like, I'll say that again, guys. The guy was caught. This, this is, guy. This is the guy that was caught at the border. Okay. How is, by the way, how is this not headline news? How is this not the number one story? The guy is going to New York as if we haven't had enough bombs and terrorism and planes in New York. Openly, by the way, give him credit. At least he's an honest and open terrorist. He's, I'm going to New York to make a bomb to blow shit Rob, up the car. Find the find words. Of, uh, yeah, and, uh, and his name pads, Basel, Basel, his parents were very creative, uh, Ebadi, 22 years old, was caught at the border uh, patrol on March 9th near El Paso, Texas. While in custody, he was asked what he's doing in the U.S., to which he replied, and I quote, I'm going to try and make a bomb. Uh, uh, say what you want. Like I said, he's, he's being uh, open and honest. Like, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. The ones that we didn't get, they get together, they do their things, and they, and they make something crazy happen. And the last thing, the Supreme Court yesterday indefinitely blocked Texas from enforcing immigration laws. So that's a victory for the Biden administration and Mayorkas. The invasion is back on, and the left can get uh, in their steady, steady flow of votes, drugs, and sex trafficked children. Uh, the SCOTUS's orders state that the Texas authorities cannot arrest or detain illegal immigrants until the appellate court rules in the matter. This is due to Biden administration wow. filing emergency appeals, forcing the border back open, which goes back to the point that you guys were talking about left and right. And what are we saying? This is such a blatant invasion of what they're trying to do. Uh, Elon posted a thing after he talked with um, Don Lamont about what these, because Don Lamont's like, you don't know what you're talking about, about these illegals coming in. They're not, Pat, did you see this video? Can you speed this up, Rob? Is there any way to speed this video up? This is who? Elon posted this yesterday about all these illegals coming in. If you, if you, if you don't mind, Pat, play, yeah, go look how play. sick this is. The Democrat open borders plan to entrench single party rule, explained in under two minutes. One, flood the country with untold millions of illegals by land, sea, and air from all over the world, enough to eclipse the populations of 36 individual U.S. states so far. Two, prioritize the needs of these millions of non citizens over the needs of the American citizen with free flights, buses, hotels, meals, and phones, ensuring their loyalty to the political party that imported them. Three, keep them in the country at all costs, even when they commit violent crime like murder and rape. Attack the language used to describe the criminals as opposed to the criminals themselves. Slander critics as racist. Four, ensure their privileges are made irrevocable with city and state sanctuary laws that act as population magnets, codify permanent status and ensure non-cooperation with ICE. Five, count the non-citizens in the census that will determine congressional apportionment in the House of Representatives. As of now, that would equal 13 extra congressional districts, a tremendous amount of electoral power. Six, wage a massive, heavily funded lawfare campaign to change state voting laws that legalize mass mail-in ballots, oh. no signature verification, and no proof of citizenship requirements, making it nearly impossible to prove voter fraud. Seven, lock in the permanent voting majority with campaign promises of lavish benefits and permanent privileges, enshrining generational fealty to the Democrat Party. Eight, win elections. Nine, entrenched single party rule has been achieved. Like, the best part? Your tax dollars are paying for it. Like, think about it. That's exactly what's happening. And like, I'm going back to the, the, the cop that died dealing with an illegal. It's only a matter of time to one of the terrorists that they didn't catch actually makes it to New York. But like, because in all rea reality, they're already there. They're already where they need to be. They just caught this one guy and it's only a matter of time till it happens and it drives me crazy that these people like Lake and Riley's family has to has to mourn this cop's family uh has to mourn because none of it happens to these people like Mayorkas do you think Mayorkas or Joe Biden or anybody in the administration's family is getting affected is any of their family members getting killed Pat or any of their uh cop cousins getting uh dealing with the guy that had a knife no and that's why I I, I don't wish negative upon people, but I, I hate the fact that it's happening so, to good people and not to them. Tom, thoughts? Well, 
Before people react to the Supreme Court on this one real quick, the Supreme Court made the right decision. State do state things, federals do federal things, and Texas can't arrest people that the federal government says can come across the border. The problem is the federal government allowing it to happen. Once they're in Texas, Texas can arrest them for doing illegal things and protect its people. But the fact that that's a federal border that the federal government says can be porous is the crime here. And Texas is trying to do everything they can to protect its people. But in that in this case, the Supreme Court is right. And I hate that they're right, but they're right. And what I see in this is how can you not read it like this? How can you not read that they're just trying to put in a single party rule and a permanent majority for what? Okay. What is it? It makes you believe in the, the whole globalist agenda that this is only chapter one. Rob, here's what I want you to do. Can you do me a favor and type in the word of the terrorist? Basel, Basel, Ebadi. Yep. OK, now I want you to see this. Okay, and go to, no, okay, look at, no, don't do anything. Just zoom in a little bit. Zoom in if you could. Who's written about it? Fox News, New York Post, New York Post. Hindustan. Hindustan Times. That's, nope, that's, that's it. That's but do me a favor. Hindu. Go more news. Go more news. And zoom in. CNN wrote about it right there. Go down right there. Fed and Vizquez, Lebanese. NBC wrote about it. Okay, no problem. CNN. Migrant caught at border wrote about it. Okay, keep York. going, keep going, keep going. And, no, and nobody else. Now, no, take that name and go to YouTube. Okay, take that name and go to YouTube, shoot. copy, paste, and go to YouTube and type in the name um, of the guy. Just copy, co copy, put the name in. Nobody commented on it. Wow. Unbelievable. Go, go lower. The only person I commented on it was New York Post. Look at that. And look how many views it got. 2,300 views. Is that crazy? Go lower. Go lower. Basella, Switzerland. Basil, Switzerland. Keep going. Keep going. There it is. Kind of like sad to see the state of affairs. Okay. They just talked about it right now. Maybe that's what that story is about 44 minutes ago. And that's it. There's nothing else about that story. Weird. Isn't that like, wh wh how do you take that? Wh why not? Wh how is that not number maybe, one? Maybe they're going to respond to it today. Maybe, you know, we're not being fair with them where they're going to be reacting to it today. Uh, maybe there's so many stories that they don't want to. Maybe they're so immigration out where they're kind of like, man, we've been doing so much of this illegal immigration stuff that we have to get some new stories here. Mm -hmm. And maybe they just don't want to cover the story because it goes against the story that they want, especially the mainstream media. Well, the beauty for them is, though, guess what? Once it does happen and it's going to happen, something is going to happen, you know what they're going to say? Well, guys, we, we love people. We want to let everybody in because the Statue of Liberty, and that's how they're going to spin it. They're going to win regardless. Here's some stats that Kelly sent in. Um, the ones they caught... In 2023, 169 individuals on the terrorist watch list apprehended. Were caught. Right, caught. Got you. 18 individuals on the terrorist watch list apprehended in September alone. At least 1.7 million known gotaways <laughs> since 2021. Huh. Okay. 598 known gang members arrested in 2023, including 178 from MS-13. Coming into the streets here. Go ahead, Adam. Well, this is why this is the number one issue in the country at this point. You know, a year ago it was inflation. You know, they famously say it's the economy, stupid. At this point, how can this not be the number one issue in the country? This is a national security issue. This is everything and everything in between. The open border Biden uh, administration doctrine is disastrous. And the fact that he had sort of the... Uh, the mocking tone uh, in the State of the Union. I mean, to me, this is like the number one reason that the Democratic Party is just so completely out of touch with the American values at this point. This is not what the Democratic Party at least stood for for decades. This is not what Clinton stood for. You know, Obama was the deporter in chief. You know, people forget that Obama deported more migrants than anybody else. So I don't know what the hell Biden learned for Obama. It, this ain't it. This ain't it. But there are levels to this thing. Yeah, there it is, deporter of chief. There's a difference, you know, it's a spectrum. There's a difference between coming for asylum and literally looking for safety. There's a difference between being a trafficker or gang member. There's a big difference between uh, MS-13, how do you call it, and Maracela Chucha. Maracela Chucha. You do that so good. And then there's a big difference between uh, jihadi terrorists. So, you know, what's wrong with Hezbollah? Coming into the country, Vin, I mean, what's wrong? Yeah, okay. Hezbollah, Hamas, Houthis, they're all, yeah. they're all great people. Yeah. But so just so you understand, not to get uh, to, to be all like 
combative. This is exactly why us Americans have no clue what Israel is going through right now. Because Hamas is Hezbollah. Hezbollah is the Houthis. Hezbollah, Houthis are ISIS. It'd be the equivalent of Canada, Mexico, Cuba, all trying to blow up America. So yes, I mean, not to get all into the Israel situation, can you talk about Netanyahu and what they're doing a little extreme? But if every one of your neighbors is literally a jihadi terrorist, like the Houthis, like the Hezbollah, like Hamas, how do you deal with it? Americans have no clue, zero clue, what it's like to live in war. The closest thing we've ever had to it is Pearl Harbor, World War II in Hawaii, and maybe the Cuban Missile Crisis. Were you alive for that, by the way? Cuban Missile well, Crisis? 9-11 was in, pretty yeah, bad. Okay, that was bad, but it's not like they were attacking each one of us. That was one big thing. Horrible. I get it. And your friend Steve Schmidt thinks that January 6th was worse than that. Yeah. But we have no clue what it's looked like, what, what, like protecting your citizens if every single day you're dealing with somebody literally trying to come into the country and kill you. By the way. Big difference. Guess what? Yeah. Mr. Handsome, mm -hmm. single, manecting with women. That want to have babies and men, and men. you know, we, I, <laughs> but I can't I, have babies. I, but we got to get you to respond back faster than seven days. But we'll do you, our best. You, but, yeah. but uh, the, the, the one thing that I want to tell you is the following. Mm -hmm. You ready? I love how concerned you are. OK. And how paranoid you are. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm thinking of what you're saying and I'm actually visualizing how concerning it would be to raise your kids in that climate. Just like my parents were worried about raising me in Iran. They should be, yes. And did Iran lose democracy? Yes. Yes. Do you see the, the risk but of... But Iran never had a democracy. Well, under the Shah, it was a very... It was imperialism. It was imperialism, it but it was, it, it, was like, it was like UK, Britain, okay? It was like UK, Britain, because you had a king, mm -hmm. just like they have a king, you had certain similar capitalism was alive, you know, people would be very... if. if if the leaders of the world wanted to meet somewhere, they would go in Iran and have business meetings. Okay, then go in other places. There's they no doubt that under the Shah, was white it, critiques was way better than whatever the theocracy is going on. But there you today. know what happened? No yes. the, he did not believe the threats of Khomeini. Hmm. The Shah thought he was not a threat. And all his people from the inside, the, his Savak, which is our CIA, UK's MI6, when they told them, this guy Khomeini, stop thinking he's not a big deal. His tapes are circulating in the streets and people are listening to him. They're sending the tapes and they're telling people to dub the tapes and give it to everybody else. Boom, Iran falls. That's when? February of 1979, January of 1979. That's how many years ago? 45 years ago, Iran is still a dangerous place where you and I cannot go there for vacation. And I'd love to go there today. If I had, if I had my way, I'd love to take the kids there today, but it's not a safe place to take there. That's the part where mm -hmm. all of these people are coming the way they are. Borders are wide open. 10 million people came in. Maybe the democracy is on the line if we don't get our act together in 2024. And here's what we're going to be doing, folks. One of the names that a lot of people are saying that is on the short list of people they're considering as a vice president for 2024 is going to be on the podcast live. And by the way, again, I want to remind you guys, tickets will so sell out as soon as ASAP. Yeah. She has a new book coming out, and everybody who attends, no matter what tier of the ticket you buy, we are buying a, a copy of the book for you, and she has agreed to sign the book for you, and that's none other than Rap, if you want to play the clip for the next live podcast coming up at 5990 Live, here's who it'll be. Go ahead, Rob. I can no longer oh. remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes and we, we have to just follow. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. Yeah. There we go. Harris on nice. a debate stage wow. before, I would look forward to doing that again. <laughs> well, April, April 25th. 25th. April 25th. And Rob, can you go back to the picture so we can show? Do you have the picture if you just want to show it? April 25th, 2 to 4.30 uh, p.m., 
Uh, that is April 25th is it's what a they Thursday, were. It's a I Thursday, believe. 2 to 4.30 p.m., Tulsi Gabbard. This got, gang, this will sell out. For, for the people that are out of Florida that are watching this, I'm, we're going to send the story here out to you guys to know that we just announced this. But this will sell out in no time. All you need to do is go to 5990 Live, get yourself a ticket. The last one we did with Candace and Cuomo, Cuomo was in the back at the Cigar Lounge with people asking a bunch of different questions from him, agreed or disagreed with him, but they had the conversation for some of you that want to meet Tulsi Gabbard face-to-face. Let me tell you one thing here. Whether something happens in 2024 with her and election-wise and somebody decides to bring in on the administration, VP, who knows? Tulsi's not going away. Nope. Tulsi's going to end up doing something the next uh, uh, in the future, and this is somebody you want to hear from. So, again, mm-hmm. 25th, 2024, 2 to 4 30 at 5990 Live. Go to 5990 Live, get registered. The VIP tickets, like I say every single time, it will sell out within the 30 minutes, and then you can't call or connect or text me and say, Pat, can I please get a ticket? It sells out every single time in 30 minutes. Looking forward to seeing you guys there. Having said that, I think the next podcast is Thursday. Yeah. Can I say With, one uh, thing about Tulsi? What's that? I think it just it, it's sort of indicative of where politics is these days. She ran for president in the Democratic Party <laughs> in 2020. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. She was a Democrat who can no longer stand for what they're doing. I love it. She was a representative for from Hawaii. She was Hawaii. she was a congressperson. Yep. Democrat. Democrat, veteran, Democrat, veteran, Democrat, yeah. ran for president, <laughs> was on the stage slicing and dicing Kamala, Kamala ripped her apart. Shot. And she at this point is basically saying, I can't enough go is along enough. with this. Enough this is, is someone enough. you have to respect because she's no longer just going the blue no matter who situation. I also think that people on the right should maybe take a look at that as well. But Tulsi, you got to respect the fact that she's just not walking the company line and she's actually standing and saying what she believes in. So I respect the hell out of her. Awesome. Sounds good. Looking forward to it, gang. Thursday, Dave Rubin on the podcast here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.